This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. Econ flight. And, uh, Jack, if we're going to uh, do any picture thing, announce uh, the command module uh, windows. I think we ought to do that either pretty quick or uh, hold up till uh, Jim and Jack get their rest done. Stop his way. Yeah, we, we concur with that. Yeah, we concur with that. Uh, you think we're not going to take any command module pictures until after the rest period? I think we'll have the f stop uh, momentarily for the DC camera, which is the best one, and that would not be out of the uh, command module one to one. It would not be, or would it be? It would be. Well, I'm not real keen on that. That's probably right where the skipper is sleeping, but I don't know. But he's been up for X hours, a goodly long while, and uh, I, I, and I don't want to do that. Okay, good. So. Uh, Let's, let's think in terms of uh, of getting f stops and getting cameras ready. If something drifts by the limb window, fine, and you can think about what to do later. Uh, if for the, for the other one, it's more important that he get safe Agreed. in a good rest situation, and that we take a picture of a four-inch square piece of metal. Okay, Fred. Uh, we're not going to. Uh bother the skipper up there. We won't be taking any pictures out of the uh, command module window until after rest period. Okay. And, uh, Flight, what else were we working on there besides the mid-course and entry and um, CSM status, I guess, huh? Well, CSM status? Yeah, people are working on, on that hard, on that configuration. In fact, I was, th I was thinking that we had uh, a, uh, already had a, a list of uh, circuit breakers to do, uh, to, to, to go to, to kind of establish a basic configuration from which we would then Delta for whatever else. Is that, did I? I've it got one. Come uh, back from the simulator. We, I don't think we want to go through that oh, after no. the rest period is over, but we do have that. Is that right? I have one here for me, yes. And uh, I think we ought to wait, like you say, until uh, we get two guys up together. Okay. And the only other suggestion that I would have would be Inco flight. Is that Inco work on a uh, having his back pocket or a. Uh, Procedure to turn on the CSM if uh, for emergencies. If we if we needed to power up the comm, although it's kind of academic because we would need it unless we lost comm. We couldn't do that to anyone. Anyway. Uh, the trench can go green if they would please. Okay, uh, tell me, flight. Go flight. Okay, what's your status here? Uh, we're we're in pretty good shape. We are standing by for the uh, CO2 partial pressure. It's 11.5 now. You're predicting in about an hour that'll go to 15. Uh, well, we predicted uh, that it would be 15 by about 28, 83, 21, but it looks like it may take a little bit longer. Okay, now, uh, Sergeant, are you on also? I'm here, Flex. Okay, the last thing I heard, there was some dis debate. Uh, in fact, uh, Econ flight. Play, huh? Okay, there was some there was some debate going on as to uh, as to whether it was really advisable to, to let the uh, partial pressure get up to 15 before switching to the secondaries because of your alternate procedure here with the uh, with the uh, with the mailbox thing. Right. Now we all agreed that that is the best thing to do is to let it go to 15 and then switch to secondary, which will give us about six more hours, as I understand it. I don't think it is, but uh, we're just about there anyway, so. You don't think it is? Uh, I think we need uh, two What's guys to make this mailbox thing, and so uh, that might be another uh, input in. We do need two guys to do it? For uh, a couple of the uh, parts of the procedure, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to have two guys. 
Okay, what I had in mind, Capcom, it really doesn't have anything to do with the mailbox, really. Uh, well, it does in a way, I guess. Uh, but uh, we'll proceed on the basis of, of going to 15. Now, if we have difficulty with our communication, Surgeon, I want to go ahead and switch over to the secondary uh, right away. In fact, Surgeon, what do you make of the fact that the sensor on board is uh, about a millimeter higher? Do you want to go with the onboard sensor or or our data here? I tell you, it's right. I think that the uh, I think that onboard uh, reading is actually a little more accurate than the one we're getting because it fits my projected curve uh, uh, better. Okay, I then can, what we I want to show you what I mean. So I really would like to have about a uh, I'd really like to have a reading from the onboard uh, crewman every about every 30 minutes. And uh, see what, how that does compare with what we're getting. Now, let me let me mention one other thing. These sensors are not the most accurate in the world, anyway. Uh, yeah, Roger that. And we still haven't got biomed data on on these crewmen, which we need for a backup to this thing. Maybe okay, that's the levels of, of uh, range. We don't know exactly where we are. Okay, and that's a good point. And uh, as long as the calm is as good as it is, uh, Inco, you you don't see any problem in uh, in going to that uh, biomed position. Inco flight. Go flight. Do you see any problem in going to the uh, and turning the biomed on? No, I think we can handle it. We might lose just a smidge and a little bit of rate, but not a whole lot. I don't believe. We're not going to lose any uh, voice quality, are we? I'd not like to see it get any worse. No, I believe it'll hold. Uh, Flight, let me let me suggest it. Uh, let's let's give it a try, and if it uh, if you see that it's giving us uh, problems in that regard, and all we can uh, back off. Okay, so uh, Capcom, the the uh, the point here, I guess, is that uh, we want to go with his onboard uh, reading, and we want. When he uh, when he gets to 15, we want him to switch over to the secondaries. We would like him, uh, if it's convenient, to give us a status every 30 minutes uh, on that reading, and uh, and we can call him and, and remind him about that. And uh, the uh, uh, and we would like to turn the biomed switch on. And what exactly what's the nomenclature on that? Biomed right or left? Uh, whichever one. I assume he's plugged into the right. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Is that right, like Whichever one he's on. Yeah, because he's on the uh, SD audio, so that's the right side. Well, I tell me, go. Uh, uh, one more point on this: as soon as they switch to the uh, secondary cartridge, they probably ought to change out that primary cartridge. Take the one on the, from the Aston engine cover and go ahead and insert okay, it in the primary. Point. Okay. Uh, the reason there is occasionally these things swell and it may be very difficult to remove if right. we leave it in too long. The other uh, item is that, as I understand it, as soon as we finish with the secondary cartridge, we want to go ahead and try to implement this procedure using CSM cartridges and see if that's going to work at all. Okay, this brings up a point, uh, Capcom. Uh, I, I kind of would like to see us maintain some moderate level of activity for Fred, uh, uh, not not overload him at all. In fact, and, and you can phrase this however you want to. If, if he if he thinks we're asking him to do too much, he can certainly tell us that. But enough to keep him uh, uh, kind of occupied here, so you know he doesn't get tired or overly sleepy and all that to kind of keep him going. Even if uh, even if you could give him that uh, hydroxide procedure there. And, and let him uh, start on that, and if it takes two guys to do it, he can just uh, stop. Right. Does that sound reasonable to you? Yeah, it does. Okay, so uh, we want to switch at 15 on the crew gauge, uh, and as soon as we do that, we want to go ahead and take uh, change the uh, primary cartridge. We would like the biomed, uh, and uh, we would like a kind of a crew uh, a gauge report every 30 minutes if he can do that for us. And uh, and that biomed switch is uh, on the right, just to the right, I guess. Okay, and uh, when we do get to 15, you want to go to secondary and then put the other cartridge in, huh? Yes, and stay on secondary. Right, uh, Okay. Tell me. Go ahead, Mike. You want to stay on the secondary. That's fine. But okay. have the primary ready. 
Yeah, we want to go ahead and change those to primary cartridge, but we want to stay on the secondary. That's right, stay on the secondary. Right. The reason I'm asking you is because uh, I earlier heard that we were going to use the two cartridges we got, but save the other primary. But that also, in order to use this uh, mailbox, we've got to have the primary cartridge out of there. So well, we can do take either with either, you can take the secondary cartridge out of its canister too. It doesn't make any difference either one. Right, but the point is that we want to go ahead and put another and, and to get that old primary out before it swells, then we have trouble with it. That's right. Right. That, that's the point there. And later on, we can take the primary cartridge out if uh, if we decide to do that. The new one. I mean, you know, it'll it won't be. Uh, I was just trying to save the steps of putting this primary cartridge in and taking it out without having to use it in between. Well, well we, the, the problem is we're going to end up without any place to stow it. Uh, and and if, if we can use what we can do, uh, we're going to end up with the same problem with the secondary, but it is smaller. Plus the fact that we would, we would be in a position uh, by putting the primary on in there. I don't think he's, you know, he's not very busy right now to give something to do. Plus the fact that uh, we'd be in a position where we could just switch back to primary mode if we wanted to drop the CO2 down. PCO2. Tell me your flight. Go ahead. I'd like to hear more about the uh, about the hydroxide plant. In fact, I think I'd like to hear you and the FAO uh, come up with a with a with a big scheme on that. We'll do flight. Okay. FAO, you copy that. Okay, Fred, uh, for your information, your CO2 reading on board is a little higher than what we're reading here on the ground. And so when it gets to 15 on your meter, switch to secondary. And uh, we'd like to get a status uh, about every 30 minutes. We'll give you a call on that. Uh, but uh, just to let us know we're still thinking about you, we'd like you to go biomed bio right, please. Okay, going uh, biomed uh, right. Light FAO. Go. On uh, the surface Hasselblad, if uh, Fred wants to take some pictures, the best bet is an F56, one two hundred and fiftieth. F5.6 at 1250 and focus. And uh, he might try, if he uh, takes several pictures, he might go up an F stop and then down an F stop. And how do you read me on this uh, combo on the face band? How does it look? Nice work, Red Elmi. Enco flight? Go for it. Okay, how does that column look for now we've got that done? Be me, surgeon? It's all right. Roger. Uh, FAO flight. Go ahead, flight. Okay, you didn't tell me the focus, did you? No, what that means, flight, is that he estimates the distance and sets that in his camera. Okay. This is for which camera, by the way? That's the surface Hasselblad. For the surface Hasselblad. You copy that, Capcom? Surgeon flight. Go flight. What, uh, is your biomed looking okay? Oh, your heart rate, that's all you got, yeah? Flight, it looks great. Okay. Capcom flight.
He can't fly. Fly, he can't. Okay, now I'd like for you to think about how you can send the lamp power to the CFM. Okay. And uh, also think about, uh, I'd like to have some, some stand or some kind of a, an analysis of the efficiency of that operation. Like how many amp hours does it take to get one amp hour into the CFM? What do you want to use the uh, lamp power for? Does it matter? Pardon? Does it make it? You mean? Well, it's not a very difficult matter to get it into the CSM. It's just a matter of. Okay, I think uh, you ought to think about the different. Uh, well, for one thing, charging the battery. Okay. Another thing, powering the comm. Another thing, powering up the G and M. Okay. And the control system. All right. And perhaps. Uh, okay. And. Uh, is the efficiency a function of what you do with it, or is that just the, uh, the, the well, battery charger? The battery charger is uh, what you're doing there is uh, you're transferring energy from one battery to another at a cost. Uh, the rest of the time, okay. it's just a matter of whatever drop there is. Okay. In the line. Well, tell me what, what what you think that would be. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, econ flight. Flight econ. Okay, the other other thing I'd like for you to work on is the water transfer from the CSM. Okay. And tell me, flight. Go ahead, flight. Okay, and in addition to the things that you're doing here about your consumables, I'd like for you to think about a, a kind of a some type of a status board or a display I should say. Like I don't know exactly how to do that. Uh, probably a tabular thing. Well you want time to go, race, things like that? Yeah, maybe the, uh, the what the uh, what the prediction is based on and what our current rate is. The sort of thing, if you, if you can do it, and maybe you can't do this, it might be too complicated, but if you can, uh, if, if you can uh, think in terms of, of, uh, of, a, uh, of something that you might put on one, on one uh, display channel here, in fact, we might even put it on the IDA4, uh, where you can tell at a glance what the, what the complete status is. Okay. I'll something that you might update every, uh, oh, you know, every two hours or some, some number like that. Okay. We'll try to come up with something. I think about that some. I'm not sure how it's the best way to do that. All right. And I'm assuming that you're happy with the, with the things that are going on now. Is that right? Uh, by that yeah, I mean, as happy uh, as it can be under these circumstances. <laughs> okay, but what I mean by that is that your the power level's gone down to something that's uh, equal to or below the prediction that, that uh, I've got all these consumables that that you that uh, Bill gave Gene earlier about the uh, lifetimes and so forth. And they were, for example, the power was predicted on 14, as I recall, or 14 and a half. Right, our average, below that. our average is about 12.3. Okay, it was also a water usage rate that was uh, three point something. Is that right? Yeah, we're getting, uh, where it's coming on down as the, because the power's been off and it'll take about an hour before we get a real good feel of what it's going to be. Okay, it's doing what you expected. Yes. Okay, yes. an hour or so, I want to hear more about all that. And uh, we talked about the lithium hydroxide and oxygen. 
What about that? Plenty of oxygen. Okay, I want to talk to you some more about that, about uh, about some of the assumptions that go into the oxygen uh, measurements. Uh, are we really, for example, are we really as, as bad as we think? Like, uh, is there any temperature anomalies here like that that would tend to make us think our usage rate is less than it really is? Uh, there is some of that, yes. Okay, I want to know. Uh, I'd okay. like to hear a little bit more about that later on in the evening. Okay. In the morning, as the case may be. All right. Okay. Control, you can go back uh, green. Let's see, Econ, I'll talk to you. You can go green. Network, uh, how are you doing? Network flight? Flight network. Okay, what's your status? Do you have any problems at all? That's the negative. We have no uh, significant problems in the network. Of course, okay. since we only have one vehicle, we are sat on site. We've got got plenty of support. We got rid of the IU, didn't we? That's the firm, and uh, uh, we've given the Araya a preliminary pad, and uh, they're deploying their, uh, plan four Araya to new staging bases out at uh, Fiji Islands, and uh, three at Fiji Islands, and one at Darwin. Okay. Recovery flight. Go flight. What's your uh, your uh, end of mission plan? Do you... Uh, are you going to call in any extra uh, any extra aircraft? Right. The present plan. One thirties like. Right. The present plan is to increase the number of one thirties from two to four. The positioning and end of mission array is yet to be determined. Oh, okay. Thank you. And FAO flight. Go ahead, flight. Okay. I've asked you about the. Uh, I asked tell you to work on the uh, LIOH canister type thing. And uh, I'd like to get up a flight plan that includes that kind of stuff. So uh, uh, carry one out. You're probably already working on that. That's right. Uh, matter of fact, on this LOA canister thing, uh, we're also getting with uh, uh, Dick Mayo and those folks in Econ may be aware of this, but they're also working on a, an integrated uh, schedule of changing out the cartridges using the CSM thing uh, for the medical people and I guess for Econ also. Okay. And for tell you, and we're getting with them to get that schedule to make sure we can get it in a, integrated into the flight plan. Uh, a couple other things we're working on to flight. Uh, uh, we're trying to get f stops for all these cameras so that we can have those standing by to take pictures if it's necessary. Uh, we're uh, looking at uh, entry procedures uh, a little bit. There's a data priority to meet tomorrow, and we're trying to get some stuff ready. Uh, to be ready for that. Uh, mainly, our big support will be in providing simulators to, uh, to check a lot of this stuff. Uh, another uh, thing is the procedure for doing the mid courses if, if they're required. Uh, we're looking a little into that and trying to figure out a way to get the simulator up to, to, uh, to check those, uh, which is not an easy task, it appears. Uh, the, the LMS just doesn't ever used transert. Yeah, very well. Okay. And uh, it's getting a, in a transert phase is, is very unusual when we're trying to figure out what to do. That. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, we've got a flight plan that's uh, being showed on Channel 60 now. We're getting copies uh, made, uh, getting it typed up and copies made uh, and passed around, trying to keep everybody updated with what it looks like for the next uh, 20, 24, 48 hours. It does go past 84. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. It'll go for the next uh, 48 hours. Okay. Uh, I think that's all right now that we've been working on. We're trying to work with uh, Ecom and all these other folks on some of these specialized procedures. Also, and verify that we can with using simulators or whatever. Hey, Capcom flight. Capcom flight. Go flight. Okay, that F stop was F5.6 at 1250, and he's to do the focus. He could try changing the F stops uh, one each way, and that's for the surface high supply. See, I'll give you that right quick. Did you get all that? I'm sorry. Okay, I got F5.6 at 1250 for the surface camera, and the uh, F stop uh, couldn't vary one either way. 
and it's supposed to serve as that play. Right. And we're working on uh, f stops for all the other cameras. Flight there. FAO. Go. Uh, we'd like for them to try pictures at f stop either way also. Uh, okay. Not, it can vary, but we'd like to try and make sure we okay. get a good exposure. And that's on targets of opportunity. Okay. Uh, you want, in other words, uh, three f stops in each picture, right? Yes. And uh, and what uh, are the ones below that? Uh, four, five, six, and eight. Four, four point That's four. That's right. Four. It's, it's four and eight, and then it's the five point six. Okay. Right. And uh, where do we stand on other things, procedures that we need to read up to in uh, Capcom? Has he pretty well got uh, all his data loads on board? He's got all the data. Uh, he's got the com procedure. Uh, he's got. Uh, he's been advised of. Uh, what he's got left in the uh, state he's powered down at, and uh, I told him we had a flight plan uh, update, although I don't think it's necessary to uh, go through the whole bloody mess because it's probably going to change a little bit anyway. Yeah, you might make him aware when the mid course is. I think that's probably something he's interested in. Other than that, the rest of it is free with you. How about yeah, that, I've uh, just been passing him a lot of uh, nice to know information. Yeah. What about the uh, the mailbox thing? The uh, lithium hydroxide. Is, does he have that procedure on board yet? He doesn't have that procedure. Uh, we weren't in a big rush for it, to tell you the truth. And uh, I went back and made one of these things, and uh, I was going to kind of put it in uh, words that are a little easier to understand than uh, reading off procedure. But I like a. I think the only way to work it is uh, to have him do it as I read each step, and it'll take probably two guys. Okay. Uh, The only thing is that we, the way I understand the current plan is that thinking is that we need to have that ready when we run out of uh, the secondary cartridge, which is going to be in some maybe six or eight hours from now. So if it takes a long time to get it built, uh, you, you might want to start on one guy anyway. And if, uh, if it's too hard or if he, uh, it takes about, uh, it took me about ten minutes. Okay. For one. Did you just use the directions, or did anybody help you? I had uh, someone read me the directions okay. as I did it. Okay. Well, why don't we, why don't you write, as you get a chance here, write that on up in a procedure and we'll just watch the uh, PCO2 and all of that and see how we look on that secondary canister and uh, if we think we need to do it earlier, we will. Otherwise, right. we'll wait till they get up. And go flight. Go flight. Okay. Tell me what you're planning on doing here uh, in a way of uh, kind of roughly keeping track of the uh, antennas. Well, I can tell when he what switches here, pretty man? much by the uh, signal strength indications that I've got in the course of the noise. I've been keeping a log of when okay, he switches uh, and everything. And if and when we lose any data, I'll keep a log of that. Okay, if you, uh, and you're you're logging it by time, you can tell us about how long he is on each antenna. Yes. Flight uh, computer soup. Go. Uh, we just had a hardware problem on our mock, which selected over to the DSC. We're still running with two machines, but I recommend bringing up another DSC. Okay, do that. Uh, Roger, it'll take about 10 seconds to the data. Okay, stand by for that time for that. Yes, sir. We're running on one machine real fine right now. Okay, uh, Inco, how, how do with a go. How long do you estimate before we uh, have a uh, antenna handover? Probably about four, five, about four minutes. And, uh, okay, uh, go ahead, uh, computer soup, with your restart. All right. Hey, all stations, stand by for a 10 second and, drop out. Uh, working on the CSM systems uh, status. Uh, tomorrow, sometime, we're going to main bus B checkout. So uh, we've got a lot of people uh, swinging pretty hard here and I've got some uh, f-stop settings for you for the uh, lunar surface camera at uh, 1 250th. We'd like you to take targets of opportunity. Each picture uh, use three f-stops because we don't know exactly which one is going to work the best. So uh, use four, five, six, and eight. And one two fiftieth for the service camera. Got it. Uh, 
Okay, use the sensor camera, uh, shooting at 1 2 50th, uh, 4, 5.6, and uh, 8. And I've been doing quite a bit of shooting, uh, I've covered two of those numbers in a range, uh, 5, 6, and 8. And also the shooting from the 11th, so I'll just drop it down a little more. But the moon uh, is still so big and uh, bright here that uh, I got a feeling that uh, the moon is uh, stopped up around. Uh, Roger, I didn't catch the last part. Uh, maybe when the time gets a little better, you can say it again. Okay, out of your heat now, Jack. Flight computer, sir. Go. Uh, we have two machines up in cycling in sync at this time. Yeah, okay. Said, uh, the moon is uh, still so uh, bright that I think uh, probably the higher range rest stop better uh, F-8, uh, maybe even F-11. Okay. Happy that F-8, we agree with that flight. I can just uh, barely on the left corner of the moon now uh, make out the uh, foothills of uh, Stromaro Formation. Never did uh, get to see it when we were in close up. Okay, I'm uh, reading on my monitor here, Fred, that you're uh, 16,214 miles away from the moon, moving at uh, about 4,500 feet a second. Okay. Okay, did you get that flight? He's been taking pictures at F-8 and F-11 uh, because he's uh, in the vicinity of the moon and it's kind of bright around there. Got it. Okay, thank you. And the uh, procedure... The of all the uh, work that is going on and is still going on, uh, this flight's uh, probably a lot uh, bigger test for the uh, system on the ground than up here. Yeah, you've been uh, you've been working it out a little bit. Yeah, I really got a tough job right now uh, switching off. Me. Huh. And come, I want you to log which which. Which I'm he's on it uh, after you yeah, get the data on that. I like to see what it looks like. Mystic, uh, looks like we're on the upside of the whole thing now. I've been logging that flight. Okay, I like. I, yeah, like I guess uh, we better be in pretty good shape. Uh, uh, I think for ourselves, for us, is, uh, for that uh, entry day. I think that's going to be a pretty busy one. Right and. Uh, we're working on uh, procedures for that. Uh, Ken's been doing quite a bit of work on uh, getting ready for entry. You can go for that green income. Say so again, Floyd. Go back green. Very good. Floyd? Go. How about if I have a bunch of those numbers about the mid course, how big, uh, when, and uh, about the trajectory and all that sort of stuff, unless somebody's already passed that information? Uh, we have passed that. I, okay. I'm not real sure Fred's got it, though. Probably does. Uh, the time of it is 104 approximately, and uh, the last word I had was it was around six feet a second. Uh, let's see what the Fido has. He owes us something anyway. Fido play. Go play. Uh, copy your conversation. Uh, we're not ready to update our premise yet, but we're looking at we're looking at our maneuvers off of DC vectors. And the latest DC vector, which we just looked at, shows about seven feet per second at 104 hours. Okay, seven feet a second at 104, and when do you expect to update the ephemeris? Look at about one, look at about 85.30. 85.30, and at that time, do uh, you think you'll have a good enough uh, confidence in it that it would be worthwhile to send a block data type pad up to him? Uh, we think so, flight of data keeps hanging in like it is now. Okay.
Okay, let's uh, let's let's do that because that column is not going to get worse here. Copy. It's going real good now, but. Okay, you copied that. Uh, Auto flight. Yeah, flight. What what was our homing in on the uh, on the mid course uh, definition here on the nomenclature? Is it mid course five? Is that right? Uh, I think that's uh, that's right, but uh, we've been using uh, five and seven. But I guess the mid course at 104 and EI minus seven hours is. Why don't you come up with something simpler than 104? Can we can we say mid course five? Mid course five and seven. Okay, mid course five. Yeah, that fits all the standard definitions, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I concur. That's good enough. I'm sorry, flight to cut you out on the uh, mid course. Uh, okay, the uh, it's now looking like it's about seven feet a second. At 104. Uh, At 104. Oh, there about 105 something there. 104.30 or something like that. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's what it looks like. And. Um, Mike, tell him that we are, uh, we're going to prepare him a pad for a block that it was going to have a couple of hours in case of this. Although we would expect to have a better vector uh, close as we get more bracket, but we, as soon as we get what we think is a valid vector, we're going to get him a block data pad for that one course. Okay, and that's going to be RCS? Hey, that'll probably do with the dip. What's your flight path angle? Now? Yeah. Stand by. Plus 79.45. Plus what? 79.45. I guess that ain't Reference the... Uh, to the moon. I guess that ain't the number that uh, I was looking for. Oh, we want a number like about entering. six and a half degrees minus. Seven eleven five. Seven. Minus seven point one one. Minus seven point one one. Up front. Better not tell them that. That's in the corridor. Well, that's right on the area. Right? We're shooting for six point five, right? Up front. Yeah, but plus or minus one is the corridor, isn't it? No, it's about seven to. Uh, okay. To about one across the border. Well, that's normal in the car. Okay. Yeah, it's not all that bad. It's no, I thought earlier close. that it. I thought earlier it wasn't in the car. Okay. Okay, it's uh. It's come the, in just a little. Right. The point is, is getting better as we get more traction, which we told him earlier, Capcom. FAL and guidance flight. Go flight. FAL flight. Sorry, he's on the other line just now. Will you talk, talk on the flight director, Luke? Oh, you want, you want me? Oh, yes, excuse please, me. Please. I'm sorry, Vice. Okay, uh, I, I was wondering uh, if uh, if Fred can, in some manner, check on uh, on what the PTC is or how it's doing. How would he he go about doing that? Uh, For example, could he kind of check it? Uh, how the 
moon sweeps across the uh, yeah. if one of the windows and sees if it's getting uh, if, if he could if, if he could tell us where uh, the, on one revolution where the where the moon and if he could pick some stars that as he went around and tell us where the Earth is we could probably compute how his PTC is doing uh, how it did on that one pass. Uh, there's no way we could help him. No, I understand that, but I was just trying to get a feel for how the cone angle's doing in case uh, we want to, uh, well, not that we, so that we could have a uh, kind of an advanced warning if, it's, uh, if it starts getting real bad, okay. for example. And uh, He already made the comment one time, right, that the uh, PTC was looking good because the moon came through the same position in the window. Did he? I didn't copy yeah. that. And this was a long time ago, shortly after we established PTC, and uh, so you know you can just ask him again, and he would look at this, look at it the same. Well, way. that tells me he's already looking at it. Anything yeah. else? Uh, uh, well, let, let us think about it. We might come up with something else that he could. Yeah, I'm not looking for any big deal here, but just as uh, you know, if we could get some kind of a feel for the way that the wobble might be progressing, we it might give us perhaps some indication of, of how. Our, Antennas, uh, what to expect on the antennas. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Flight network. So, yeah, I just want to for warn you. We uh, set up for a handover between Coastal Wing and Honeysuckle Wing in about uh, 19 minutes at 8400. And okay, handover. Be handover known? should be coincide should be timed so that you're right in the middle of a of an antenna cycle. That is, uh, I suppose Enco has a time period, uh, a cycle period, like you can say that we're going to be good from say 41 minutes to 45 minutes or 47 or whatever his number is. And I think you and he ought to correlate and you ought to plan to hand over in the middle of that good calm period so that it gives us the maximum chance to, to relock on it, etc. Right. So we'll okay. we'll, we'll okay. affirm that that's a good time to do it, and if not, we'll make plans otherwise. In other words, we're probably not going to be handing over at some nice even time, like uh, whatever you said, on the hour or stuff like that. Okay, but we've set up the sites. We have to give them some sort of time. Now we will. We okay, but he probably knows right now. Uh, well, how much time do you need? Advance time do you need? Thirty yeah. minutes? No, no, no. We can do it. You know, we can change it a minute prior to it. Okay. Well, I would think that, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes ahead of time, he would know what's a uh, more precise time. Is that right, Inco? We'll uh, try to tag up and get together and give him a good time. Sometimes if he don't switch just right on, it kind of shifts the thing a little bit. So we'll, average it averages out pretty good.
Right, Retro. Stand up. Yeah. Stand by, thing. Okay, flight retro. Go ahead. To update you, the flight entry flight path angle that we give you was based on the confirmed maneuver, which is showing like a foot per second mid course with that oh, kind okay. of a confirmed maneuver. However, the mid courses that we're looking at now is like seven foot per second at, at mid course five and thirty at uh, at mid course seven, and this is not even entering. Okay. okay. This is like an 80 mile vacuum period. Okay, that's what I had heard before. Okay. We kind of got cross data here. Okay, so now we do have to make some course and that's huge. Okay. Well, that's still based on preliminary data. Roger that. How's it going, Fred? Okay, just fine. Okay, uh, we're considering a, a mid-course correction at 104 hours, uh, about 20 hours from now, 18 hours from now, and it's only 7 feet per second. Uh, and the other option is to uh, keep PTC up, and so we may not be able to get back into it again and uh, delay it. So, uh, that's the type of thing we're uh, thinking about, but uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, you're pretty much uh, right in the middle of the fairway there, and uh, our present tracking uh, with no mid-course uh, has you uh, with a gamma of 7.11 as opposed to 6.51, so you're already in the quarter, you're just a half a degree uh, between the center and the outer limit, and we're going to tweak that up. Okay, that uh, sounds good. And uh, we don't, uh, we think there might have been a misunderstanding earlier on uh, potable water. Uh, don't worry about drinking water, drink all you want. There's plenty of it, there's 38 pounds. And uh, the surgeon recommends that uh, you uh, use some of the uh, fruit juices as well, over. Okay, uh, yeah, we went up and uh, and uh, used the procedure to pressurize the surgeon tank, and uh, Jack and I made up a total of uh, 22 uh, uh, drinks, uh, drinks uh, of water. Okay. Okay, he thinks the uh, PTC is degrading a little bit. Uh, he's saying that the uh, Earth is starting to come through the window a little bit lower and the moon a little bit higher, so he's uh, losing a little bit of pitch attitude there. Okay, I couldn't copy that too good. Okay, PTC degrading. Guidance and FAO, you copy? Roger, Flight. Copy, Flight. 
And Enco, you copy. Copy, flight. Let's see, Earth lower and Moon higher. Is that what he said, Capcom? That's right, boy. Let's see, that doesn't exactly compute. GNC flight. Go ahead, flight. Here's the uh, PTC expert. You copy that? The Earth higher and the uh, Earth lower, rather, and the Moon higher through the limb windows. Limb windows being essentially out the, uh, looking straight out, huh? No, wait a minute, that isn't right. And Fred, on this, uh, I mean, if he was wobbling, uh, you would expect both of them to be higher. Oxide wouldn't you? Canister, uh, it has to be exactly uh, in what we're going to say. do is we're going to have to make at least two up and use two at a time, one on each set of hoses. What we'll do is we'll connect uh, one of these jury rigged boxes to the red fittings and air will be sucked through the lithium hydroxide and uh, then blown out the blue fitting. And uh, we're also going to, when we do this, remove the uh, lamb lithium hydroxide canister from the suit loop, uh, either the primary or the secondary. And uh, we're getting the words together uh, to make it easy to build one of these things. And it looks like it probably take two guys, so uh, I think we probably ought to plan to do that later. In addition, we have to uh, go up and get a couple of canisters out of the uh, command module, so it looks like maybe a smart idea would be to delay a little bit and uh, have you build a couple of these later on. What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree, Jack. Uh, uh, Jack White and I went upstairs earlier and broke out a canister and we were scratching around with the material to think about using and uh, that's actually why when we made up all the water drinks was we needed the uh, plastic container that they were housed in the pantry. And uh, we had that uh, ready to use uh, for some material, plus uh, we got some pretty uh, uh, thick uh, porous bags that we're going to use for the uh, dust control that we made and cut up in here too. Uh, did you come up with a uh, design? Or got lots Two of these canisters up. Roger. Flight Network. 
Inco. We've checked with Inco, and uh, we got four minutes to the handover. Um, I'll give you a cue at one minute prior to it. Okay, Capcom, you copy? Four minutes to a handover. We're trying to aim at the middle of his uh, good Omni period. Okay, fine. We yeah. should have no downlink data loss. We'll just uh, lose the uplink for about 30 seconds. Yeah, but that makes him think we've lost the downlink. That's fine. Okay, uh, four minutes. We're going to have a handover and we're going to lose an uplink, right? Yeah, just temporarily for a short period. It'll be right at uh, 8400. We'll, uh, we'll hand over. It'll be about 30 seconds before we reestablish the uplink. Fred, in about four minutes, uh, we're going to hand you over to a different uh, communication site. It's going to take us about a minute or so to reestablish uplink, so uh, you can be prepared for that. Okay, Jack. Go flight. No, it strikes me that uh, we're not going to gain anything on this lithium hydroxide. Are we? Well, we're going to run the CCO2 up to 15 millimeters and get right. it all nice and saturated, and then we're going to turn on the secondary with this nice fresh lithium hydroxide and we're going to circulate scrub a whole bunch of stuff and we're going to scrub it all out and all that means is we're going to use up the secondary canister quicker. That's, probably, that's really true. You're going to uh, reduce your time. I don't know by how much that you're going to uh, have on that uh, on that can. You guys have scientifically figured out that we have a net gain here by doing it this way? I mean, you know, we just got so many molecules of lithium hydroxide and we got so many molecules of CO and et cetera. Yeah. Uh, it must all come out to be the same. It must somewhere along the way. You think. Uh, well, I guess. You know, it's, uh, it's only so many. It, uh, it all works out to the same number of hours. Tell me, Flight. Go. One thing uh, on this, it is true. It, it would, some of the cartridges, if you hit them with a real heavy load to begin with, you do decrease the lifetime. However, the PLIS cartridge is uh, more capable of taking a higher input than the LAM is. Yeah, but I don't And the 15 see, wouldn't uh, hurt it. Load factor is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the total amount of CO2 that it can scrub out, and that's a, I think that's true. That's a fixed. Well, fixed it, it, it is a, it's a function of total metabolic rate into it. That's true. The lower it is, the better off the cartridge is. And we're as low as we can probably get at the present time with two men sleeping in one. No, that ain't what I'm talking about either. Talking about if we go to 15 parts per million on the gauge, we have all we've done. Okay, I must have missed something. Well, I'm saying is that we're going to, we, we, one of the things that we've done is that we've just built up the, uh, the, the amount in the cabin. Right. And if you run, if you then have to get, the first thing that your second, secondary canister is going to do is suck all that up and try to, and True. it will presumably. Yes. So you, have you really gained anything? In other words, you've just, you've just, you know, you've taken all that stuff out of one tank and put it in the other tank, but have you really captured any more total molecules of breath? Yeah, but you run the second tank longer, so you get you can gain that much. Maybe. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, not gonna run it longer. It, it sucks up all those. I think you're slightly ahead running them longer, but uh, I, it'd be difficult to prove. Right now, we've handed over. For example, are you really uh, putting more, uh, more, more molecules in the primary canister, or are you just building it up in the cabin? Well, I think really what you've done really is you, that you've already gained the, the maximum amount of time that you're going to have in, the, in, uh, in exhausting this first canister. Okay. Well, you, you've, uh, you've, 
you've made your gain uh, uh, right here at the big at the start, and thus bought yourself some time on on this uh, jury rig uh, okay. cartridge arrangement. Okay. Okay. Time to uh, prove that. Okay. You're right. You're, you're right, Bill. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm on the other Humvee now. About that long ago, too. You're coming in even louder than on the previous station. Rod, maybe it's because I'm standing up. Uh, you're coming in better now, too. And go flight. Go flight. Hey, I want uh, I want you to show me uh, the the frequency of antenna switches here on some kind of a visual display. I can see a plot or a tabulation or something. You say you have that on your log there? Yeah, it's about every six and a half minutes. Go back and see what it was that when we first went to PTC and what it is now. Would you please? I'll try to work out something like that. Average, just at, I don't, not every time, but average about four of those cycles out back at the beginning and average the last four and see if it comes out to six and a half minutes. Okay. Still. I'm on uh, AFD. Thank uh -huh. 
taking this out of the limb where he had not been able to fuck either. Incidentally, this uh, PTC must have some, must have a wobble uh, mode around our uh, x-axis there. Because uh, now the uh, moon and Earth are back in about the right perspective. Good, let's uh, see if it goes the other way. These guys down here are saying that they knew it all the time. Light surging. Go. Can we uh, perhaps get Fred to give us a readout on their CO2 reading? We've yeah, I don't we've, gone, we've gone an hour. That's their 30 minute malt point. Capcom flight. When it's convenient here, next time you're talking to Fred, we'll just give us a reading of that CO2. Okay. Okay. Hey, Fred, uh, sometime when you're not too busy chewing on that uh, beef, how about telling us what the CO2 reads? <coughs> Copy that, uh, Sergeant and Econ. Uh, tell me. Copy.
Surgeon, this is a recovery on recovery loop. Put you on a flight. It appears the uh, rubble is going the, uh, the other way, Jack, because the uh, earth is uh, now rising in the boot, so it's starting to get lower in the window. Flight, can we have the LPD? Can we have the Roger, LPD? Uh, can you give us an LPD number uh, periodically? About two in a row, uh, two revs in a row if he could. LPD number? Yeah, okay. In fact, if you could give it uh, two or three revs in a row, uh, then we could uh, predict where it's going and maybe help us uh, set it up again if we have to. said the moon was lower now than it has been. So Earth was, was higher, yes, okay. Inco flight.
in Cove Flight. Go fly. This, this number 13, 13 minutes here is... Uh, that's one revolution. Yeah, point. that's from half to half, okay. Right. LPD-21, is that the center of the moon, you say? That's perfect.
And uh, Fred, we're doing a little better on our water than we had anticipated. Uh, our numbers were uh, designed for uh, 3.5 pounds per hour. We're using about 3.0 and expect to go a little bit less. Okay, the uh, earth went, just, went by uh, just uh, clear above the uh, LPD index uh, drive. Uh, if it was, uh, if it was extended, then the number would be uh, minus uh, six. Okay, way up there to minus six. And it's actually a no such uh, number. I just uh, extended the line beyond zero. A negative range, and that's uh, what it would be if uh, it was a uh, 
right uh, understand uh, if minus six was there that's where it would be right that's right what was that the earth minus six going the wrong direction we're flying this flight do you still have that uh, super dense star uh, flight uh, it would be nice if we could ask him, just uh, although the moon is pretty big, just ask him where the, where the moon is and all of this. He did. He said that. Uh, well, where, where did he say uh, the moon was? Right Don't you now, listen uh, to the air to ground? Uh, uh, I got it punched up, but I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. 21. Uh, 21. Uh, and all these sparklies go up. And, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like I'm right in the middle of the, uh, the uh, Milky Way there.
How you feeling, Fred? Oh, as soon as I uh, come down this uh, great drink and uh, great fruit uh, orange drink, I think I'll uh, be in pretty good shape. How much uh, sleep did you get between the burn and uh, the time you got up for this exercise? Oh, I'd uh, guess we made about four hours, Jack. Oh, wait a minute. Which burn did you talk about? Uh, that was the burn that we just made. Uh, did you get any sleep between it and uh, the time you got up for this watch? We're just trying to figure out uh, who's likely to be the most tired up there. You or uh, Jim? I think uh, we'll get caught up pretty good in the next uh, couple of days. Say again? Yeah, I'll get uh, caught up pretty good in the next couple of days. Okay, uh, back to the earth is uh, further back down. Uh, the uh, hack on the LPD there was one degree.
Okay, one degree on the center of the earth. Got it, White. Ten minutes and forty five seconds. Ten minutes and forty five seconds. I thought we were looking at thirteen. Well I this is my data now. And I know that that's when he's switching. Okay, I thought you had thirteen just a little while ago. Well I did, but I it looks like he's uh, keeping them, switching them right about the same time every time since then, and it looks pretty good. We've made two revs, and it's been uh, right at 10 to 11 every time, so that looks pretty good. It's still pretty gross because he, he doesn't switch the same time every time. Yeah, but he ain't telling us. He's not marking the antenna. But you can tell from the antennas over several cycles, it's bound to be about right. 11 to 13 minutes is, of course, that's quite a bit, but that's it's somewhere right in there. He keeps telling us where the Earth and Moon is on that their index will. It really helps keeping track of for sure where he's at that way. Started with an eight degree cone. Eight Sorry. degree, eight degree half angle cone. That's that's what we had based on our uh, when our, we powered down the platform. Yes, based on that first 30, 45 minutes, whatever it was, 30 minutes probably. Okay. So we know it's at least that. Yeah, maybe in a couple more points we might be able to make an educated guess as to what it is. You know? That was a good TV show you put put on the other night, Fred, uh, during Lime Entry. Yeah, put him in an even better one about uh, 10 minutes later. Things sure uh, turned to worms there in a hurry after that show. The center of the moon now is about uh, minus uh, two degrees off the moon. Minus two degrees, center of the moon. Got it, Blake. Blake, would you believe that's what we calculated as the nominal LPD angle for the moon? For the nominal peak No, I wouldn't believe that. I figured you wouldn't, but I'd tell you anyway. How big is the moon? It must fill a whole LPD. I mean, the whole window. Yeah, but uh, 
Uh, he can use a guess as to the size, and it's not going to be off uh, more than, uh, I would say, five degrees at the most. No. And, and, and that's probably uh, very, very uh, outside. That's like probably about a 16 sigma number. Surgeon recovery mounted. You got any recovery plans, Fred? Play? Right, that's a good one. <laughs> any recovery plans? Yeah, where well, they're going to, uh, they're going to go to Pago Pago for two days, or they're going to go to Hawaii for a week, or they're going to come right home. And, uh, Who would they like to go? Have a Hawaii for a week sounds good. And we are we are planning on getting some extra forces in there. Rise will be there, and we have some extra airplanes there. And of course, the LPH will be there. Recovery flight. Okay. Okay. 
Go ahead, Fly. What's your present plan for uh, after you recover the crew? Uh, wait one. Flight recovery. Go ahead. Go ahead. The situation is they'll spend the night on the ship, and the next morning they'll take a helo to Samoa, and they'll get off, hop right on 141, and fly directly to Ellington. But how long will that take? Uh, what's that, about a 14-hour flight or something? Must not be that long. I'm um, not for sure. I can check on that. What's the weather forecast? Flight is recovering. Go ahead. Uh, the schedule we have now has it leaving at 0900 from Pago Pago on the 18th and arriving at 2300. Oh, oh, 0900 local, you mean out there, or what? Zulu. Zulu, oh, 0900 Zulu, and arrive Ellington and how much? 23? 2300 Zulu. 18. Okay, uh, Saturday afternoon at uh, 1700, they arrive at Ellington. 1700 local. Landing zone with respect to uh, checkpoints out there. How many miles from Pago Pago? We'll get that for you in a sec. Okay. Is uh, Pago Pago one of the Simone Islands? Watch out, 49. I got the uh, IP in Simone on it. distance from the landing point to Samoa is 560 nautical miles. Okay, 560, and uh, you said they're coming. Okay, the uh, moon had uh, estimated up around uh, minus somewhere 17 and 
Uh, this is recovery. I didn't copy that thing. Okay, uh, you said uh, they're going to leave out a Pago Pago, but they're going to Samoa. Is Pago Pago, Pago an uh, island in the Samoa? Is that what it Oh, oh, Would you like to spend a week on an aircraft carrier getting back? If I can uh, get on an aircraft carrier, I don't care uh, how long it takes, Jack. They're going to take you by Hilo to Samoa. You'll spend the night in Samoa. Get on a 141 and be at Ellington shortly thereafter. Okay, uh, kind of sounds like the original plan for uh, the uh, heart part. Night in the ship or night in the small? You're going to spend the night on the ship or the night of small? Yeah. Fly recovery. Go ahead. As you were in okay, uh, I think that schedule they just passed you was for a leaving the ship as soon as possible. The afternoon that was the 17th. And a last minute word we got in here, the crew wants to stay on it. Or they, the feeling is to let the crew stay on board overnight. And that schedule would be slick. Okay, I don't know what overnight is. I'm sorry, I don't know where the Zulus are right there. Okay, well, let's in work. They landed at 1800. Right, in local time, hour they're landing, they're going to be landing about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Ah, so, okay. And the plan, the original plan was worked up to get them off that afternoon, the 17th out there, uh, when they got within cod range of Samoa. And then we got a late word in here that uh, I think uh, from Slate that he thought it would be a good idea to let them stay on board a ship overnight. So uh, right now we're kind of up in the air. We can go either way, get them off ASAP or let them stay on board overnight. Fred, I'm not reading you. Maybe we better uh, wait until we change the antennas, sir, unless you can speak up a little louder. I get it now. Better.
hardly look like you can turn. Geez, I'm sorry, Fred. Uh, we're just not reading you right now. Uh, maybe we'll have to wait a little bit. Okay. Now let's try it now. If you can speak up, the background noise has gone down a little bit. Hey, how do you read now? A little better. I was just commenting, I've been uh, looking here at the uh, clusters out across one and four, and except for a slight discoloration of the outside of the barrel, the nozzle up, looks like they had never been fired, which is under brand new. Not a speck of uh, anything on the uh, interior of the upper nozzle that I can see. Say the coloration of the thrusters appears they haven't been fired on quads one and four. Well, I'm saying all of them. I guess the uh, these things fire so clean that uh, they're not facing resonate at all. And uh, the heat, I think, maybe it's uh, just colored uh, slightly the uh, copper uh, bronze uh, color. Of Okay, and the earth is going by at an LPD uh, uh, 42. Roger, uh, copy LPD 42. Is that affirmed? That's firm. That may be why the uh, comma is a little bit degraded, more background noise, because uh, we're getting out of attitude a little bit there. Roger. What do you make of that, uh, Inco? Or uh, FAO either one? FAO is making motions to himself. I suppose it's, uh, it's, it's possible here, for example, we might even have to switch, we might even switch antenna. I mean, we might get in a position where you you could never go to another antenna. You, you just lose it, and eventually you get it back on the same one.
your read now, Jack. About the same, Fred. Okay. Hey, Fred, did you uh, get the dope on the Saturn IV impact, S4B impact? Yeah, just as we came around the corner, uh, they answered the told us that it hit, uh, I don't recall the position now, but uh, he said they uh, had impacted and they had uh, reported it on the uh, 12 of my mother. Affected uh, 74 nautical miles from uh, the LSEP and the passive seismic detected major seismic activity on all long period channels. And this was, this activity was detected for four hours.
Okay, the Earth uh, LTV number that time was 32. Roger, 32. I'm reading you, Fred, and I got a lot of background noise, though. Yeah, I can uh, definitely tell we're moving away from the moon now. I got it uh, all in the monocular at one time. Uh, we're right over the top of uh, the FCAA right now. You're right over the top of what? Our point between it and the terrain. The FCAA and uh, the point uh, halfway. Say the uh, checkpoint over which you're uh, right now. Okay, uh, and incidentally, the LCD on the moon for zero, so it's coming back down. Uh, the point uh, looks like we're just about straight over is uh, around Centurina, and the point uh, between it and FCA uh, A.
battle flight. Go flight. So what's going on down in your trench? Say again. What what's going on down there? Uh, we're standing by, hoping to get a vector at about eighty-five thirty. Okay, eighty-five thirty. That's a fire. All right. And uh, retro, what? How are you doing down there on on our? What what capability we have left? Oh, okay. I, we've got some data. Uh, we can uh, change uh, trip time. At EI minus 24 hours with uh, the present uh, Delta V. Okay, to something like 132 hours. If you jettison the service module, you land around 18 degrees west. Keeping the service module, the present configuration, we can change the trip time to about 138 hours, to 98 degrees west. Okay, excuse me, uh, network flight. Flight network. You got one of those famous squeals in here again. Well, have to check on it, flight. I Hello, expect uh, to know where it's coming from. I think it just went away, though. Excuse me, Retro. Uh, by jettison the service module, what do we got now? I'm sorry. Okay, if you jettison the service module, you can uh, reduce the trip time. 132 hours. 132 hours as late as EI minus 24. And where were you landed to do that? After landing at 18 degrees west. And not jettisoning the service module, we can move it to a landing of 98 degrees west with a landing time of 138 hours. 138 hours at this same time, EI minus 24. That's the And we'd land at, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the latitude. Uh, I didn't give you a latitude. The longitude, longitude is 98 west. Okay, that's, uh, what delta V was that? Is okay, that, uh, uh, the first one was assuming about uh, 2,900 feet per second. Second one is about 1100. Flight, tell me. Go tell me. Mirage, we've got about 147 millimeters of mercury. We ought to think about changing, selecting the secondary cartridge, secondary canister, and changing out the primary cartridge. Okay. We're 14.9 right now. Okay, let's have them do that, Capcom. Okay, when you say change out, you want them to uh, remove the primary and put the uh, new one in? And go to, we want them to go to secondary, right? Select secondary and uh, change to primary cartridges. Okay. And Would give you, us a call when you select secondary, please. I can tell that flight. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, and uh, Jack, the Earth, uh, LCD angle at uh, 24 degrees. Roger, Earth at 24, and it looks like you're getting up to about 15 on the uh, CO2, so we want you to... Select secondary and uh, swap out the primary cartridge, over. Okay, I'll select secondary and swap out the uh, primary cartridge. Okay, when he swaps out the primary, do you want him to stay on secondary till we use it up? Affirmative, right, tell you. Take in flight. Stay on the secondary until it's used up. That's affirmative flight. And hey, what channel do you have that on, tell me? Uh, okay, channel 5. And, uh, when you swap, 5? When you swap out the... Uh, I have my display card. on 5. It's the same one on the uh, channel up there. Select primary. Stay on secondary until we use the secondary up. Over. Okay, I got you now. And he has selected secondary. Okay. CV, yeah. SEC there. Primary, He's on uh, secondary. Uh, Column up. Uh, and uh, all the way down where it says SEC. Copy all this, don't you?
Um, okay. Tell me, flight. What do you make of all that? It went down to six, and that, and then it real quick like it went to six, and then it seems to be much slower going below that. Is there some reason for that? Uh, I'm not sure, flight. We're gonna have to watch it a little bit. This is a kind of a new situation. Do you agree? Is that what it did? Yes, what, that's what I, what I thought. It did. That's okay. right. That's what it did. What we're doing, of course, is we're picking up the uh, CO2 partial pressure immediately after it comes out of the cartridge. Right, yeah, I understand. Okay. So it's now not reflective exactly of what's in the cabin. Yes, I understand. Is that what you think is the last time that we have to do to, to take that kind of action? If we're waiting later than that, it's not going to, we're not really going to be able to do much with that Delta V, are we? No. You could probably wait a little later, but uh, we really don't have that much capability. Okay, how about the SPS? Uh, I already didn't look at that flight. I've been doing some other studies here. I put that kind of down in the priorities. What other studies have you been doing? Well, I've been supporting uh, stuff for MIT to look at some data, and I'm going to support some more here. What, what MIT, MIT to look at what data? They've asked for some vectors, rest mats, okay, so that they can look at star fields and stuff. For alignment for the mid course? Well, for uh, star fields for the separation for the limb. They're going to do a star field study for uh, separation. So I've given them the entry rest mat and a vector. Okay. on your priorities, just out of curiosity. I do. The best I can. It must be hard. Okay, well, you're right. That service SPS thing is uh, it's not a immediate thing at all. In fact, it sounds like you're not going to get to it. Uh, retro flight. Go ahead. Well, what is it that you're working on for the FAO? I uh, just got it. I'm looking at it. Yeah, but what is it? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll read it as I read it. It's state vector. Oh, I see. You just got it in your hand. I thought yeah. you meant you just finished it. No. Okay, well, look over that. I, I wonder, for example, if that may not be more important than Starfield for entry. It's entry stuff, too, I, I see. He says this is for that uh, simulator run they want to do in the morning, so I'm, you know, it's not an immediate thing. But he'd like to have it sometime before they start that uh, sim tomorrow, when they get the simulator tomorrow. Yeah, you might do that maybe before you work on Starfield. I mean, see, that sounds like something they can do tomorrow. Okay, well, have at it.
fight FAO. Go. Uh, just a push of interest here on this uh, PTC thing that we've been plotting up with the Earth and the Moon. It looks like we got about a 24 degree half angle on the cone. And uh, we, it's reversed itself and turned it back. And we, if it reads it out anymore, we'll plot it up again and see if it stays 24 degrees. Okay. It looks like, though, you need a lot more than two points every, and then go a whole bunch of hours and then two more points. Well, yeah, it did, uh, but uh, it would have given us the same indication just a little longer, too. Okay, uh, copy the change out complete. We're reading 4.5 on the CO2 here. Copy change out complete, fine. Hands light. Go ahead. Hey, it's Joe Roach back there. Affirmative. Go ahead. Hey, Joe, sorry, you heard here telling me somebody's coming over at 3 and I got tied up here. What? We're going to have a meeting on the lithium hydroxide plant and also the water plant. 
Okay, lithium hydroxide and water. Right, and we've notified all the right people, I think. Okay, you might make that lithium hydroxide one first, because uh, I guess we're saying in something less than six hours there, we're going to want to implement something. Right. Is that right? Right. And we've had, this is the, should be the frosting on the meeting we had earlier. I hope we'll have everything put together. And the procedure that the CAPCOM has is the one developed by these people. Well, say that again, Joe. The little clues that they've got there down the CAPCOM's console. Yes. And all the test data we hope to have here at this meeting. Okay, I uh, understand that, but I guess, uh, and y'all are going to address, and whoever else is, gets a vote there are going to address the subject of of uh, a scheduling exactly when you're going to do that, when you're going to do the, the flip, use the flip cartridges and that stuff, huh? It's permanent. Oh, okay. And we'll, that'll be put into the flight plan by the FAO. Right. And the docs are coming in concerned about the left and left and left. Yeah, okay. Back out again, isn't it? There.
uh, retro flight. Go ahead, Frank. Put that landing inclination or azimuth or whatever ground track. It's uh, 30 degrees inclination. Essentially, it's bouncing around 30 something. That'll be 30, 30, 30 degrees towards from the north. Huh. Yeah, it's that thing. Good. Okay. And it's got an entry azimuth about uh, 86 degrees. Or 89 degrees, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Well, I want the ground to track over the ground. Am I asking you the right question? If I was to fly. A line through the end of mission point that represents the ground track and the lift capability. Would I make it 30 degrees or 87? Well, the inclination of the turn is 30 degrees. The flight has an entry is 89 degrees. Well, that, that's still an answer to my question. I'm sorry. I want to lay a track. I can the give you the uh, entry point and the uh, target point. That's kind of the ground track thing. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe it's maybe it's late at night. I have the end of mission point on this map. Now I want to know which way my ranging capability is. Is it at a, on an angle of 30 degrees? Okay, I think, we, I think we've got that plotted on the map. Maybe that'd be helpful to just yes, look at that. Is. Okay. See oh, no, that's, that's on uh, 49, I have to think of it. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's uh, hmm. recovery flight. Which one of those is the ground track? I don't my loop, I don't think. I, I can hear you, but uh, barely. Are you on recovery? Man, you're weak. Flight recovery? Okay, you see the line passing through the uh, MPL abort uh, information there? There's an arrow down to the ellipse of the major axis vertical there. The point to the ground track on the map. You do that. I'm, I'm looking at the map. Got that. That's the ground. That's where we're going to land. Yeah, the move down range. The ground track at that line. Is going to East and west. Right, just about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I thought all this time the ground track was that other line. What's that other line going through there? Just uh, nothing? No, nothing, Tom. Okay. That's a good possibility. It's left over from an old ground track. Probably Gemini 8 or something.
flight, tell me. Go, take two. Yeah, when you come back, I want to talk about consumables with you. Where are we at on consumables? You've gone, you got an 85 hour update or something? That's right, 85 hours in channel 58. Okay, when you get back, we'll talk about it, okay? Our final flight. Flight center. Okay, did you get the vector and all that? Uh, from this flight. Okay, uh, did, did you look good enough to, to do a pad on? Well, that's all we got right now. You yeah. Know, I would go with it. Okay, how about, would you do that, please? Stand by.
Okay, Jim, uh, we're kind of watching this PTC a little bit. Uh, Fred's been giving us a few LPD angles as uh, we swing by the uh, center of the Earth, center of the moon. Uh, we notice that the uh, comm has been degrading just a little bit, so uh, you might have to talk up. Secondary CO2 canister. Fred swapped out the primary, but uh, we want to stay on the secondary until it is all used up. pressure CO2 of uh, 4.2 millimeters. We're cleared to uh, use the secondary until it reaches 15. Slide, Fado. Okay, good. Go, Fado. Okay, as far as the subject of block data goes, we've talked it over down here, and we've come to the conclusion that we don't think we ought to go out with it at this time. Why is that? because as soon as you talk about block data, you get into an area that we're not really sure that the world has agreed to how you pass it. Okay, if uh, you're going to pass a maneuver, you have to pass an attitude reference. Okay, and that gets into the whole mid-course technique, which I don't think we've come to adequate agreement on at this time. What has that got to do with giving them uh, the data that they need to get back into the car in case we lose contact? How do they use it? Flight, he doesn't know how to use it. He doesn't have procedure to press the time to execute a maneuver. Uh, I think he might invent something if he needs uh, to. He, yeah, but he, what he invents has to be compatible with what we pass. I mean, he has to know how to point the spacecraft to do anything. To do a burn. If he's going to do a burn, he has to know how to point it. And what to burn. That, that involves a procedure. Your problem is with the attitude. Is that That's what you're saying? You don't know what kind of attitude reference to give him? That's right. Now, at 9 tomorrow, we're supposed to have that get-together and, I guess, put some sort of finishing touches on the uh, mid-course technique. But that hasn't been done as yet, and I don't think you can pass block data until we get to that point. I don't know. What kind of attitude references are people thinking about? What they're thinking about is pointing the coas at the center of the Earth doing the axe, body axis aligned. What is pointing is... 
So my point is that it, that we ought to get them something on board for the worst case in which we lose calm. And I can't worry about how fancy the procedure is and, and how yeah, it might I, be wrong. If we have calm tomorrow, we can update it. I guess the thing that we're thinking about is do we want to confuse tomorrow's procedure the with something is, that's yeah. The answer is that they're not... Well, then I think we better get the people who are in on the meeting together to get a procedure that we can voice up to them. And the Senate. Yeah, but what, what, we're, what we're saying is that we have to also, at the same time, go up with a procedure on how to use the block bed. I can go. Go. Also, Mitchell's in the simulator now checking out all these procedures. Uh, looks like we want to get a good check of these things to make sure we've got everything uh, all included before we pass it up. Yes, we would like to do all that. However, you're probably talking about another 10 hours uh, here, or whatever it might be, before everybody comes to a 100% final polished agreement, which is a fine for the bona fide mid-course fine. I but, guess, I, but I'm just wondering if, if we should let the crew go that long without having a, 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 a you know, a block beta type thing. And um, I see what you're saying. And I'm questioning whether we have a choice. I mean, if we want to come up with block data now, we have to agree on a procedure that they, we would pass to them now with the block data. Uh, could we uh, give them uh, some kind of an attitude reference, uh, even though it may not be the same kind of attitude reference they use tomorrow, at least be? What is the big, yeah, what is the big thing about mid course? Is they, they're only sensitive in one direction, aren't they? Well, that's right. It used to be a local horizontal fire. Okay. And it becomes basically a procedure to get them to that attitude. We can give them that kind of a delta B. Okay. Or we can give them the whole pad. That's no problem. They're really hanging on the procedure. What happens if you tell them to burn seven feet a second horizontal, local horizontal? And let them develop their own procedure? I don't think that's right. That still doesn't give them an attitude. Right? What's the 90 How degrees, they, uh, 90 they degrees to the earth, presumably? That's what I think. I mean, the, no, yeah, but 90 degrees to the earth in plenty. Yeah, I don't think they'd be able to see that that far out. Not going to be tell over that one. Well, the procedure tentatively agreed to would do that. Yeah, I understand. Flight FAO. As I understand it, the same procedure was sort of a backup procedure on Apollo 8, and Lovell might be familiar with it. Mm, that was talked about, and the consensus of opinion is that he's not. Yeah, by tomorrow we all will. But what do we do now is the question. Right now, called that we've got thinking about calls to use the earth and the uh, terminator on the earth and the LPD. So, Jerry, what do you mean, COAS and the LPD? Have you, is this procedure written down somewhere where we could look at it? No, I can show no, you what they're thinking. I can show you what they're thinking, what they're thinking about right now, what they're trying out in the LMS. Uh, Frank, uh, we heard that the LMS uh, number one over here was down. They weren't going to try that thing until tomorrow morning. They're having problems with the LMS getting it to work integrated anyway, and we can't find a way to get it to work this procedure. Okay. That thing is not being run right now. As far as the attitude reference goes, uh, once they get to this horizontal uh, attitude uh, using the coass and the earth, 
then we'd go bring up the eggs and do a body act as a line. And then bring up the FDAI and they can use the uh, air needles. And uh, with the uh, eggs holding, uh, give attitude, uh, attitude control. But you must have to go to another. But you must have to go to some other attitude after you align it using the co-air here. Uh, no, we, we, after we get to the out of the horizontal attitude, then we take it out of the body axis of line. So the egg's in it sitting at zero, 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 and holding that attitude.
Hey, Jim, I didn't catch that suggestion. On account of the uh, background noise, uh, maybe we can uh, pass it on when it gets more favorable. Okay, I'm taking a chance of showing uh, if one of these could be used to these uh, things like the high time camera and Aquarius uh, prior to uh, the parking. say something about using the high com camera in Aquarius. Uh, negative, Jack. I'm thinking of, uh, of uh, the empty feeling of you know, the Odyssey, whether we just, uh, what we can leave behind in Aquarius. We can leave the suits behind, leaving uh, such uh, big items of the high time back in Aquarius. Oh, I understand you're thinking about stowage. What do we leave behind in Aquarius? Uh, fall back into Odyssey, is that right? That's right. We'll be looking into that. Okay, part. we have people working on that too. Jim, uh, earlier in the evening, uh, we thought there was a misunderstanding about the amount of potable water you can drink, uh, but uh, we want to advise you that uh, you can drink as much 
water as you want to. There's 38 pounds in the portable tank, and that's about all you'll need. And the doctor Spam me to AFD on my list. Yes, you uh, drink as much uh, fruit juice as you want to.
the uh, the, 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 the stars, and we didn't have the bright articles that let us know. And uh, I'll also use the camera here and see the big photographs. Uh, here we just have to get up some more debris. Okay, Jim, uh, once again, I hear you talking back there, but I can only pick out a few words. Uh, maybe we'll have a better time. Intel flight. Bill flight. Okay. Is that bow med interfering with that voice at all? I think you might help the voice a little bit if you turn it off. Figures show that it might help it. Yeah, we're not getting a good biomed signal anyway. Okay, let's let's turn the biomed switch off, uh, Capcom. Let's say, what's the right nomenclature on that? Biomed switched off. Biomed switched off, that's simple enough. Aquarius, we're trying to improve our communications. Uh, could you turn the biomed off and uh, give us a voice check, please?
Wanna play things? An old play thing. But Inco. Yeah. He turned the DUA on. No way, man. I take that back. That was a. Could be the hit. The way in your flight plan there, Chief. What's the, what's the distance from the Earth uh, at this at six hour point? Retro or Fido or anybody? Flight Fido. Yeah. You need some data from me. I need to know how far away from the Earth we will be at six hours before he has. Uh, stand by one.
you doing there, Aquarius? We're doing good, Chuck. Okay, uh, sometime when you get two guys available there and you could uh, construct one of these lithium hydroxide rigs, uh, I'd like to uh, have you get the materials together and uh, we'll go through the steps together. There's a lot of background noise, and uh, sometimes it's worse than others. And uh, right now, I hear you better than I have in the past. Okay, Jack, I'm kind of curious the amount of perturbations our PTC has had in taking. I noticed that we are uh, getting off attitude, and I'm just kind of curious how far we can let this go. We were tracking the attitudes uh, with Fred earlier, and it looked like what we were doing was oscillating uh, about some point, but uh, coming back. Uh, are you detecting some kind of divergence now? Uh, not too much. I noticed that uh, it's different than when I went this way. We were uh, more at an angle now with the Terminator of the Earth, so when we started out, we were uh, just about parallel with the Terminator, and now we are Canada. Fire might get in, read off some of those comments, and we'll cross them with lots. If he can read off those zeros, moon the LPD angles, uh, we can kind of keep a rough track of it, Danny. And also, uh, I don't, I'm not sure he understands this, but we don't plan to correct the PTC. But uh, we're going to take whatever we get as we keep, we probably keep diverging, and we're just going to have to live with it. Jim, our current plan is uh, to not correct the PTC. We're going to take whatever whatever we get and live with it. And uh, we could kind of keep track of what's going on a little better if uh, when you swing past the Earth and uh, swing past the center of the moon, if you could read off the LPD angle for the center of the Earth and the center of the moon. Sounds quite probable, Jim. Uh, that's about the same report we got from Fred, but uh, we haven't been able to identify what they might be and probably won't be able to until we crank up the CSM. If there's any change in that status, like, we just want to keep advised of it. Uh, where are we headed and uh, that sort of thing? We're still looking at that 7 foot a second mid course. At uh, 104 hours? Yeah, that's at 104. And we are outside the quarter, huh?
Flight Fighter. Go. You know, the crew's been reporting his venting off and on. We, really, we can't now. pick it up on our Doppler, though. We've been looking. Quarter. Okay. We're looking at a uh, seven foot per second mid course at 104 hours. We are going to come up with a uh, entry interface minus eight pads to use in the event of a lost comm situation. procedure for attitude for you, Jim, uh, for the no com case, it may be a little different than what the uh, the uh, guys working on the uh, procedures come up with for the burn at 104 hours. Roger. And uh, you might tell him that that must be a... Uh, do we have indications that that must be a pretty small event because it, uh, we, don't even, we don't see it on the Doppler, on the tracking event. That might make him feel better. He's probably worried now, but what's broken in the CSM again? Tell me your flight. Go ahead, flight. Can you have a brief, Jim is that, uh, briefing on the symbols here? What channel are you on? Channel 58. Uh, major final conclusions yet, but in the interim period, okay, we've got water option and ETS there in the block, and the uh, at the GET of 85 hours, you have the usable for the whole. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the uh, you got the first row there is you got the totally usable remaining for water auction and EPS. Then the the rates at those at the eighty five hours and the third column it's got the time remaining at that rate. Six and that's from eighty five hours and those are GET and you should run out. Hundred and fifty for water, two hundred and four for auction and EPS two hundred and two and a half. And lithium hydroxide, we got one primary cartridge, three flip cartridges, and 14 TSM cartridges, 212 hours total capability. And we can update this every. Okay, what? Okay, uh. You asked earlier about the oxygen rate. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that later, but. Uh, you actually considered the flip so in the LR in the lithium hydroxide. Uh, yes, yes. The the water option EPS we did not consider so. Okay, now you have not taken into account any powering up for uh, for mid courses. Uh, is that a significant amount? Not really. Not sticking in the water now will affect the EPS something a little bit, but we're uh, we have we have pretty good shape for EPS. Okay. We just got a scene run back and it looks like uh, we may not even get on the dish have to get on the asset battery. Very good. Okay, and uh uh 3.1, huh? I guess, let's think some more about your format there. Uh, it's a good one, except that it, uh, it's going to go away when you update it. You plan to update it every two hours, huh? That's, well, that's your option. That's when we thought we'd do it every two hours. We can do it every hour. Is that, is that going to bother you very much to do that every hour? Not particularly. It, it, What you got there? Uh, why don't you make it, you know, some sort of a table? It's got to be big enough. Uh, you want some so you can keep, so you can keep it thin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got a 
we copy it to 10 degrees. Is that Earth or Moon, Jim? That is Earth. Okay, Earth, 10 degrees. Thank you. Flight down. Flight. How you doing? Ten call flight. Go flight. Okay, what's your rate there now? Just change the thing we're gonna. Have Just a second, I'll run over it. I, I'm still holding right around 11 minutes for rev. Okay. And uh, your signal margins are all. Kind of yeah, good. we're a. Uh, seem like. It sounds to me like the voice is a little bit better with the bottom that off, and the cylinder data is holding in there real good. We're not losing hardly any. The level seems to be switching a little bit quicker than Fred did, and I think we're holding the data a little bit better than we were. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Fred,
Okay, we read two four, Jim. Copy that. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I see the, uh, the CO2 is down to 3.6. It's still dropping, is that right? That's correct.
fine they are. Go ahead. As we'd like to recycle CPs at this time, if you can stand about two minutes data loss. Control? He's, he's not here at his console. Tell me he's the only one here. I'm he said right. go. Right over here, see. CP recycle? Okay, Flight, I'm going to uh, pass them up to the generalized procedure. Uh, I have a more detailed procedure here, which will probably have uh, something added to it between now and tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'm standing by to uh, get some pad values for him to burn. Okay, let's see. Uh, Retro, when will you have those? The pad? The, the pad values, as simple as they are. I've got them. We're checking them here, but now you call my attention on the earliest model we use. I'm going to check with control. Okay.
Okay, Jim, uh, this is kind of a lead in to this uh, procedure that we're going to use for the uh, mid course burns. Um, I'd like to say that we're going to use eggs, and it's going to be a manual burn. The attitude will be controlled manually. The start stop on the engine will be controlled manually. So, uh, we have a pretty good vector on you now, and it turns out uh, you're coming in a little bit too shallow. So what that means is uh, we're going to make our burns to uh, come in a little more steeply, and we're going to be coming in around the dark side of the earth. Therefore, to come in more steep, our thrust should be in the direction of the sun. Does that all make sense to you? Rotate 90 degrees to get the uh, x axis pointed towards the sun. Fire control. Go. I think we ought to point out to him that all uh, maneuvering okay, will be so done using the uh, TTCA the and axe balls. Parallel to the Terminator. 
by putting the points of the crescent on the y-axis. Guidance flight and retro. Is the dip's engine bell That's ported Jamie, at the sun? Is that what you're saying? You're going to point your plus X axis at the sun and uh, put the uh, crescent, the points of the crescent on the Y axis. The points of the crescent on the Y axis with uh, the coax pointed at the center of the earth will take care of your yaw and your pitch. Okay, Jim, after you get that orientation to come in a little more steeply, we perform an ag body axis align, which is uh, a 400 plus 5 on the beta. If the ag ball is up at this time, the ag ball will go to 0, 0, 0. We can talk uh, more about uh, control mode later, but uh, we'd recommend doing it, of course, in egg attitude hold. Attitude hold. Uh, put your yaw to mode control and leave pitch and roll in pulse. Therefore, uh, controlling your attitude with the PTCA. We don't want to use the gimbal, so have engine gimbal off. We'll make these burns at 10% thrust. We'll use a manual start and stop. For ullage, we'll use the plus X translational button, and ullage will be for 10 seconds. Over. Perform the burn and guidance control to eggs and mode control to attitude hold. Your attitude control switches will be roll to pulse, pitch to pulse, and yaw to mode control. So the eggs will control your yaw, and you will use the PTCA to control pitch and roll. Engine gimbal off. 10% thrust. Start and stop manual. For ullage, use the plus X 
translational button. Ten seconds, Ulich. Over. Okay, Jim, P-30 Lem Maneuver Pad. The purpose is mid-course 7. Mound 33 is 1-3-4. 5-9-er. 4-2-9-er-8. Mound 81 is N-A. H-A is N-A. HP is plus zero zero two zero five. Delta VR is zero zero one nine or three. Burn time zero three nine or zero zero eight zero zero zero. The rest rest is NA. Thrust will be at 10%. Read back.
go with what we've got now and uh, stand by for something better if it comes, over. Everybody wondered if you'd remember that. By golly, you did. Capcom, thanks. Probably thinking, well, okay. I got a question about that procedure. Uh, and Jim, we've got a little bit more information. Uh, maneuver pad, I've got uh, lat long, range to go, verb 10, and uh, GET. You got a place to copy that down and give it to you for the EMS.
Yeah, sounds like. Right. Capcom flight. I like to get. Be sure he acknowledges that plus X towards the sun. Please be sure he acknowledges that plus X towards the sun. I don't believe he did. And the other thing is the control says that we want to do an X 400 plus zero. At, at After you do the body axis align, they need to take it out of the body axis align to go to uh, attitude hold. 400 plus zero. I thought zero. you said that. You, you didn't say that. Okay. In order to look at these air needles, you'd want to go to attitude hold. That's it. I don't know why you need a 400 plus uh, all balls anyway, because you go to... You're not in attitude hold, like you, you'll stay in body axis align the computer and you won't get safe enough. The uh, LMC is looking at his FDAI. He's setting up his FDAI to look at his air needle. So uh, going to 400 plus zero goes to attitude uh, holding his computer and gives him uh, his uh, FDAI needle. Oh, what you're saying is do a 400 plus five and a 400 plus zero right. Right back to back. Right. Okay. Because you're just staying in the body axis of line if you don't take it out. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. And, and, and be sure he acknowledges that. I want be sure he understands which direction to point the machine. And I don't think he acknowledges your statement. Well, could you do it one more time for me, please? And, uh, Jim, on the, uh, setting up the eggs, right after you do the 400 plus 5, you should do a 400 plus all balls. And one other point we want to clarify is that uh, we know that you're sure that this burn will be made with the plus X axis pointing at the sun to make the entry angle steeper. You got it? Jim, uh, you got the attitude right, and uh, did you copy about doing a 400 plus all balls after you do the 400 plus five? That is a 400 plus five and a 400 plus all zeros back to back. Okay, and uh, for everybody's uh, information in the room here and in the stand, we're having a voice state made of that, uh, a transcription made of what we just told the crew so that the people that come on later will be, have a word-for-word -word description of, of exactly what we told them in case there's any question later. And, uh, I don't know how long it'll take to get that, but it'll be here.
to keep a trend on that. Uh, this period has been going on now for some time. Otto, you're not seeing that, are you? I'm going to check again, Fly. Okay, last check we had was that we didn't even see it in a Doppler, so it must be small in the residuals. In there. We're looking again. Roger, Jim, uh, we've been taking a look at it. Uh, we haven't been able to uh, detect it on the Doppler, however. Roger. So we think it's pretty small. Hey, it tell me, I guess I hadn't really thought that it made much difference about those batteries. You guys, I think we ought, to, we ought to have a good story on charging the CSM batteries. And I assume that the span is working on that. Been doing all that. I don't mean on the procedures for how to do it, but, uh, but at what point in the timeline we would get to and what amp hours we would have where it would be practical to transfer some of those amp hours from the limb to the CSM. And uh, Houston Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Jamie, do you give me a time to act on an even to GEG so I can start my uh, watch? Do you tell me, is he authorized to start his clock? Okay, uh, coming up on uh, 87 hours and 35 minutes. So we'll be there in 30 seconds. Set it for 87.35.
flight battle. Joe Hill is calling flight this battle. Uh, Doctor Phil does not pick up anything. Okay. Do you normally see uh, things like urine dumps during the uh, uh, PTC mode? Say again, flight. When we're in the PTC mode and you're rolling, do you normally see uh, stuff like that, uh, venting and, uh, and urine dumps and things? Mm. I'd have to check on that one, flight. Okay, if I ever seen you, pretty sure you do. I know we saw it the other night when we went into it and uh, early in the game, but I don't remember very later on. We did see that thing again.
Power recovery on flight director recall. Start to maneuver, you'll have to uh, bring the eggs up and uh, 
get a 400 plus all zeros in there. And then uh, eggs will respond in yaw when you go to mode control. That is, the uh, eggs will control your yaw in, uh, in mode control, and your pitch and roll can be taken care of in pulse with the TTCA. After you get an attitude, then you'll have to redo an egg body axis align, which is 400 plus 5, and then go back to 400 plus all zeros again. ACA control uh, in yaw. It would zero his uh, attitude errors if he uh, if he didn't want to change his yaw. He could do it with ACA and as soon as he come back in detail, well, it sets a new uh, uh, a new reference on his yaw in mode control. So he can change his yaw in that mode uh, with the ACA. Copy, Captain. Flashing down about uh, 560 miles southeast of Samoa at about 0800 local time. The weather forecast for the area is good. 1500 scattered, high broken, 10 miles visibility. Seas will be five foot waves, 15 knots, and uh, you'll be going to Samoa by boat and or aircraft. You spend either a night on the boat or in Samoa. Return to Ellington by 141 on Saturday, the following day. Roger. Would you tell the people of the LRL to uh, turn it off? Oh no, we're gonna do the whole bit. I think we ought to wake him up right now and tell him he said that. Experiment flight. 
flight experiment. As you copy that on the down link, got all the home phone numbers of the LRL people. Roger. Yeah, I guess we'll wake them up this time, but interesting thought. Tell me your flight. Go ahead, flight. How many pounds of water does it cost per hour for that uh, uh, 15 amps of CSM current? Uh, let's see. About 1.17. Yeah, about 210, something like that. PM now, if it's all right with you. Instead of 0700? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Jim, we got a couple of news type items. President uh, Nixon has chosen a judge from Minnesota for the position of Associate Justice on the Supreme Court. giving federal employees a 6% pay raise past the House and went to the President. It includes the military. And the air traffic controllers return to work.
Band flight. Go ahead. What, what's going on about your lithium hydroxide business between you and the FAO and all those cats? Well, Sir, you be able to work out some arrangements. Stand by one. Oh, okay. Tell me your flight. Go flight. Okay, I see the PC now at uh, 3.3. Still going down? PCO2? Uh, right. Yeah, it's been holding fairly steady at 3.3. Occasionally go down to 3.2. Okay, give me a, I like to keep me advised that I like to know when it gets down to whether you think it's a bottom starts going up. Okay. And uh, do you have your status from 87 hours? That's fine. It's on channel 58. It's a little bit high, but it's at 8730. Say again, Jim. Say Okay, we got a minute to go. Okay, tell me I'm looking at this now. I see uh, on the water 147. Right. And the rate went up a tad. Yeah. Is that in no way? Is that what we're saying? It's possible. Yeah. We may have, the earlier one may have been a little bit lower than we expected. This one is over a longer period of time. This is over about a five hour period. Okay, do you feel, feel that everything's stabilized now on that? And that's thermally anyway? Re reasonably so, yes. Okay. The oxygen rate is a little bit misleading. That represents what we made up. Well, when we went to the secondary cartridge, we had a big drop in the uh, okay, cabin uh, pressure, relatively the big, because the CO2 was taken out fairly mark. rapidly. And had I don't know if you ought to include that in this kind of data. But you have any choice, huh? That's okay, we'll, we'll take it out in the next update. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it gives the, the wrong impression. Yeah. It's, in, it's really invalid. Did you change your, uh, your, your hours based on that, too? Yes. Well, come on, that's not reasonable, is it? No, I wouldn't do that. Okay, but anyway, uh, now, uh, people are working on how to get some water over to the CSM. Oh, to the CSM or to the limb? To the limb, rather. Now, I see what that, oh, okay, they've got that, but I haven't looked at it, I have to now, I guess. And this doesn't, uh, is there any question about you putting the plus water into the, uh, into the limb? No. We know how to do that? Yes. And how many hours does that work? About six, I believe. Well, there's there? 16 pounds in there of water. 17 five hours, pounds, four or five, five hours. hours, if we have to use it. Okay. How do you plan to use your your, your water tank? You're going to go completely dry in the descent? That's correct. And then switch to ascent. Okay. Ascent one. You something? don't. You got to take them both simultaneously. Well, then let me ask you this. Does your procedure say that you can pump the uh, plus water into the ascent tank while uh, while they're feeding? You can pump them in only. You, it doesn't do you any good to pump them in until, until the ascent number one is down to about 10% or so. And then you'd pump, you'd pump it in at that point. But you, you, go ahead. You, you wouldn't be using any out of the plus until the ascent number one tank is depleted. 
It's just got too much pressure here to allow the first water to come in. Well, I guess my feet. question is, do you really want to let the dips go, the descent tank go dry before you uh, try this procedure? It seems like I have no it. choice. You can't get in, you can't go to the half earlier? No, I, oh yes, I could. Well, that's the question, I guess. Why wouldn't you save some in your descent tank? And then go ahead and use your ascent tank and then try this procedure and if it doesn't work, you got some time left while you think about something else to do. Whereas if you let the disc go the descent go dry, you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. You let the descent go dry and, and the ascent almost dry and it doesn't work, you got very little time left. To, to you know, to figure out what's wrong and why the procedure doesn't work. Well, at that point, my only alternative is to try to find some more equipment to power down. We're just about at minimum right now. Well, no, it's not necessarily. No, well, maybe it is. I don't know how simple this procedure for pumping the uh, flush water into the asset tank is, but uh, I guess I'm just asking you why wait until the very last minute to uh, to try that procedure? Why not go ahead and use your asset water tank? Well, I think the idea is uh, would. Hopefully we won't have to do it at all. Well, and, and it, it, we can not get involved in the whole thing unless we absolutely have to. Okay, but you can still make that decision by leaving some water in your descent tank. Of course, the advantage of using all the descent water is that it gets you down, and you really can. I assume you're going to use it till it goes dry, which that probably will buy you uh, X pounds that you think is that's unusable right. and unknown and all those that's things. That's correct. How much is that worth? About uh, up to up 15, 14, 15 pounds. Okay. And that's worth four or five hours. at meeting at 3 o'clock this morning to determine the certain of these procedures uh, in room 210 with the span people indicated that was the procedure they preferred to go. Okay. Use all the descent, then the ascent, and then if we had to, we'd go with the plissy. Oh, okay, I smell it. Thank you. Okay.
How you doing, Jim? Uh, pretty good, Jack. So you might uh, have people look at our Jim Burns card to see what changes had to be made on Steve Burns. So you look at the dip and burn, you have to say what about it again, please. He's asking us to look at his dips and burn card to see what changes have to be made in that. Is that the card we have not yet updated? What we must have we used it for two two burns already? Uh is this for his uh, MCC no com burn? Well I'm sure that's what prompted him to say that, yeah. I think that old thirty minute uh, uh contingency uh, burn thing would be a better one to use. I was planning on in this uh, meeting tomorrow at nine o'clock to uh Suggest we mark up that particular uh, checklist procedure. Okay, I guess the satisfactory you're saying the answer is that it doesn't work, but it's going to be another four hours or so before we're getting something up. But I wonder if he. Is. You think that'd be satisfactory? Then? Oh, I don't see how we could. Uh, really go to any more detail without, you know, going and doing the whole thing, you know, with uh, all the different procedures, because any one of those things, you know, thick, there's going to be things left out and other things added. Yeah. We either have to leave it real gross the way it is now, or else do the whole thing and get all the, all the details. I guess what we're saying is that we'd like to hold off uh, detailed discussion of procedures for a while. If he wants to, uh, if he wants to, to look over something, that doc dip, doc dips burn in the contingency checklist would be the closest thing to it. So that man, the manual doc dips burn. That's that's one we're working on. Delta flying the Delta stick. Well, what he's thinking of is. Uh, do we have all his procedures ready to go? For example, there's a point in his manual dock dips burn procedure in that contingency book you're talking about where it says pick up the dips burn card and uh, make sure you got it you know, the way it ought to be. And this is it right here. And uh, so he's saying let's plan ahead and make sure that card is right so when he does pick it up, it's got the right dope on it. Uh, we haven't looked at that in detail yet as far as this that particular part procedure. Of our plan, though, right? right. It is part of the plan, but we don't have the data yet. We have not marked it up yet. Final flight. Go flight. This is, what does this mid-course look like at 104 now? Will you move back to stand by? Flying is seven feet per second. Okay, still seven. Huh? Yeah, he's been bouncing around seven all night. Been fairly stable. Okay. Flight seven. Go. Give some words on that vent that the crew reports. Okay. For us to see an immediate effect of the Doppler, it would have, have to be on a magnitude of about 0.04 or 0.05 feet per second. The long range effect of a small vent, such as we're probably experiencing now, would show up in a DC of a long data arc of about 8 to 10 hours. Okay, but if it was in a rolling motion, it probably wouldn't show up at all, would it? Uh, theoretically, it would negate itself, depending upon its direction. 
Okay. What was that number again? You can see how 04. .04. That's an immediate effect. Yeah, okay, Fido, what all that tells me is that you're saying is that the best you can tell that the van is less than 04 feet per second. That's correct. What we can also say is we can we got a uh, Paris engine on our first update. When we take a Paris engine on our second update, second update, we can look at that and, and compare. Yeah. And possibly come up with something. Okay. Tell me your flight. Go ahead, flight. 
You want to put that stuff back up on your channel 58, please? Right, come back. Yeah, that's the CO2 partial pressure. Uh, I wanted your, uh, yeah, sorry, I want the tabulation thing. Right, you can't put it up. That's not going to answer the question. I don't know why it's up. You know, okay, that's all right, tell me. Go ahead with whatever y'all were doing. Thank you. Now, I, I see that you, uh, where that little dip is in your oxygen there, you, you want to take that off. Or at least, uh, you know, make a note of something on it. Take it. Gives the wrong impression. Yeah. Go ahead, Clay. How you doing over there? Doing just fine. We're getting about 97% data. Okay, how does uh, how your uh, your RPM still the most thing? No, they're down to about looks like around nine. One nine or nine. Right. Okay. Can you tell anything about whether it's longer on one antenna than on the other? You might be starting to look at that now. We get into funny motions that may wind up where it's like that. I can try to figure out something like this.
back and forth, but uh, each time they're moving a little bit farther away from the center line, he might think of something to need to reestablish BTC if it's necessary. Well, it's been about 30 seconds since the last time they had a chance to get back in the middle of the line. Well, they certainly didn't last time. They were in the middle of the line. They were in the middle of the line. They were in the Plan to handle it uh, by switching the armies like we are now. We may we have longer intervals between uh, com, but I don't think we've got a chance of reestablishing PTC other than trying to back up making an alignment. We don't want to do that. Because the only way we know to get into PTC is with the. Uh, that is, you know, one, it's better than what it's doing now. He can stop it and, and reorient it and roll it up again, but I'm, the rate point will be such that it will uh, diverge again and probably fairly rapidly. Think of anything that they might do manually to, uh, as a as a kind of a sort of a last last straw to uh, reduce the uh, the divergence here. Not right now, but I mean, if, uh, if we really decide you know, to try to do that for the PPC, yeah. Uh, I'll see if anybody can uh, come up with that. Right? Okay, we don't have the guys in the back room thinking about that. I guess. Well, they want to do it unless it's being controlled back then. Okay. Yeah. 
there. The only thing we know to do is to, is to get it in the approximate attitude and give it a, a bump with the thrusters and take what we get, which will probably be pretty, uh, pretty wobbly. The only thing we can try to do, Jim, is to uh, set the thing up manually and uh, see what happens. Uh, there must be a better answer than uh, okay. one course of action is to uh, omit the mid course and uh, Make the total mid course say about eight hours before entry. We haven't decided yet. Ah, uh, that's all fine. Right now, Go ahead. Uh, the reason that I asked you that was not to do it earlier, but to do it later. The points made uh, by Deke earlier that if the uh, PTC is still reasonable, should we come out of it to make the mid course, or should we stay in it for a while longer? So we, uh, one trade-off we might have to make here is, is not the end of mid course at 104. Yeah, like we've got to get fun down to what we call mid course seven. Five, six hours, or whatever. Well, so, perhaps I kind of hate to wait that long, but 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 anyway, longer than one on four. So. Well, long enough that you wouldn't have to go back into PTC, the way I understood it. Yeah, maybe so. Quite better. Go fighter. Uh, Jim has a question, and you know when we establish the rest map, uh, we can probably give him the other line. If we go to, it can be a lot easier in establishing the PTC orientation. Well, after the mid course. That's right. Gimbal angles to where? To establish a... To we have, but the problem is that we're not planning on powering up the, uh, the platform. There will be no... Oh, I understand, but he's seeing the have yeah, an egg to land it. Oh, I throw. Right. Yeah, but you still got to manually get it started. That's right. You got to be manual, but at least it has an attitude. Yeah, okay. I, I don't think the attitude is the problem so much. It's the... Uh, that's a damn rate you don't have when you start it. Apparently, it doesn't take too big a rate to get rid of control. Copy. It's rather quickly. Copy. Yeah, we're going Uh, tell me your flight. Go ahead, flight. We're, we're still bumping around on the PO, PCO2. I see 3-3 three, three now. I thought I'd seen about 3-1 before. It's, it's, we started back up. It's been level for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Maybe it'll probably stay there for a little bit longer and then probably start back up. Okay, that's somewhat higher than normal, isn't it? 3.3. Didn't expect it to go lower than that? Well, we had to take a big chunk of uh, CO2 out, and uh, of course we've been on the thing now for about uh, three and a half hours, and it's supposed to be yeah. seven-hour cartridge, so it's not too unusual for the situation. Okay, but but what normally when you uh, you would expect it to go way on down there, wouldn't you? Well, if we started off the same way we started the primary, yes. Like the one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is.
flight photo. Go ahead. He's fixing to go get a
to go. Go ahead. Uh, you wanted to dampen the thing down to point oh five degrees a second, is that right? That's the kind of number you got to get to before it'll stay steady. It also takes off quickly. Okay, we're looking at it.
tell me, Flight. Go ahead, Flight. What, what's that? I see you got a new update on your spoon balls, 8830. Yes. Yeah. What is that number in your the, in the water rate? 3.72? I believe that's 322. That's pretty well tanked. The, the, the time 147.12 is about what's right left. We don't. Yeah, we thought of that, Jim. We don't think so because it's coming the wrong place. No, you don't. Go ahead. Okay, that's certainly a possibility. With, without using any hydrogen, we would expect some uh, spinning to go out of it. Yeah, but the guys in the span told me it was coming from the wrong from the wrong quadrant. We heated up that tank and we were using any hydrogen and therefore it could be uh, venting in the overboard relief. Tell me, Flight. Go ahead, Flight. That's 3.22. Okay, 3.22. Uh, how long do you think it would take to hook this cliff up? If we got to a situation where we had to pump the fuse to cliffs, excuse me. If we got in a position where we have to use this cliff, and then we, uh, and it ran out, uh, we got to disconnect that one and connect up the other one. How many minutes does that take and what happens during that time? Will it keep working? Uh, the sublimator will start a dry out in just a moment. I'll get a figure for how long it takes to pick it up. But, it, but you don't see any problem in all that? No. Okay. Yeah, we're at flight. That's flight. That music on a down lane? Or is it a cross talk from something else? We're checking. Okay, we got it that work. We don't mind. I didn't do that. Go ahead, tell me. Yeah, uh, there's a couple, two disconnects to make and, and unmake and take about a couple minutes. So you can keep going? Yeah. Okay.
Flight down. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, we've got a suggestion uh, on maybe a way to set one or two pounds of off, uh, water over the next 60 hours. So as far as saving that much water, is probably not real significant. But total of one pound over the next 60 hours? Or two, maybe two pounds. But the idea is it, 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 the cabin temperature uh, right now is running around 60 degrees. I don't know whether the crew is cold or hot or what, but if they care to, they could... Uh, put the suit temperature control valve to full hot. And the effect of that is going to be to warm up the cabin. And in, in the same time, you will take a little bit of the load off the uh, sublimator. Can you tell what position it's in? Uh, it's in full cold. I, I can t I tell by the fact that the temperature is very low and it looks like it's within full cold, the same as it was when it was in full cold in the previous mission. I understood him to say it was hot but up in the up in the command module. I mean it was cold rather. Well this would help that. A little bit. Okay, well we can suggest it to him. I, I can't see worrying too much about a pound over that long if it's a comfort thing, but we'll see. Yeah, okay. a comfort thing is his real would be the only real reason I can see it. Okay, cap cap down flight. Bug me on out again, tell me right after they get their hands and over down there. Roger.
about three or four hours early. And, uh, and the next time that we have is a rest period for you is at uh, 96 hours. It's uh, seven hours from now. And the hour before that, you say 95 hours, all three of you would eat. And uh, you and Jack would uh, hit the track again. Fred would have the duty until uh, under two hours. We'd be glad to uh, take care of this uh, work rest cycle. Okay, that's good. Uh, let me uh, let me wait till they get off. Or at least Jack gets off. He should be get up before Fred. And we'll try to get back on the schedule. Uh, I hate to wake anybody up right now, though. Uh, if it's sleeping. Okay, uh, your choice on that. As soon as Jack gets up, uh, I'd suggest that we uh, go ahead and uh, break up the lithium hydroxide canisters and uh, make a couple of them. Jack can uh, work on that and it's going to take uh, four sets of hands, I think. Okay, we'll make that project. Uh, do the lithium hydroxide canisters right away. Okay, that's good. Uh, we'll make Wait, we think it's in full cold. You think it's in hot?
down with the flight. Tell me your flight. Go ahead, flight. I decided I can't read the lift in my drive side thing. What yeah. did you show? You just changed that, didn't you? Okay. It's 200. It's two. Okay, but you showed 23 oh. hours in that primary car. It's been four and a half hours on uh, the number one and seven on the rest, huh? That's right. And 168 on CA. Okay. How long did the first one last? That's the 15 millimeter. 27. 27 to 15. That's right.
tell me flight. Go flight. Okay, uh, as you're predicting, I guess, that uh, once this uh, CO2 starts up, it's going to start up pretty rapidly. Is that right? It would very likely be like the uh, primary cartridge, yes. Well, I thought it would be faster than it. It would probably be a little faster, yes. Okay. Well, be sure we see that it starts up, because uh, we have yet to read that procedure up to them. Yes, I realize that, and it, and it ought to be read fairly shortly. We're at three and a half now. Yeah, three, it's, three point five feet. It's uh, just, it hasn't really started up yet, has it? Well, it started up from three three. Okay. We got three or four more hours without much problem. Well, three or four more hours. We've been on this thing for three or four hours already. We've been on it for four hours and a half. Four and a half hours? Maybe three more hours. And we started off with a 15 uh, kilometers. We're going to run back up to 15. Uh, well, we can. We're two. That's not what I understand. We, yeah, three seven point six. Oh, okay. So, uh, so we may not have that much longer. Two and a half hours, maybe. Yeah, you turn liberal in your old age here. Well, the uh, the first cartridge lasted longer than I expected. Go fly. How are we doing? Still okay? Yeah, everything's doing fine. Okay.
tell me you fly. Go fly. Uh, regarding the diesel tank, water tank. Yes. Uh, I assume that you plan right now anyway to uh, to flow from the diesel tank until it until it hits the bottom. That's correct. That means until you see it uh, stop running. That's correct. Not, right. not measurement zero now, but uh, until, until, until our water down. delta P starts to go down. Okay, and then flip the gas then. So That's correct. Uh, question, is that run any risk of breaking through the sublimator? No. Okay. Flight network. Stand by CP's back. We'd like to bring both of them back in sync. We're recycling both of them. Two minutes okay. data loss. How much? Two minutes, the most. Okay. Then uh, proceed with flight women. Proceed with flight. Can we send a CP a data loss here for the next couple of minutes? But I would to bring the CPs up. Is anybody doing any playbacks or anything? No, we're not doing any We're doing it. Okay. Okay, now we're going. Thank you.
quite know it. Then we're, we're coming up on a site hand over at 90 hours GT, another five minutes from now. Okay, is that okay for uh, Anto? Looks all right, buddy. 90 hours even. Okay with you. It's in the middle of one of those cycles you got there, those seven minute cycles. Yes, it should work out okay. Okay. And it's right hand over at uh, 89 hours. It'll be about a 30 second drop it on the uplink. We'll at 90. Yes, you need to tell him because he might switch antennas and unnecessarily so. He's going to get the squelch for about 30 seconds. We've got a uh, site handover in about two minutes, and we'll have a temporary loss of time. You don't need to switch antennas, over. Okay.
is Houston through Madrid for a comp check. How do you read? Okay, Jim. Tell me you Go ahead, Fly. What channel is your uh, water, you know, that consumable total story on? Uh, on channel 58. Now, I'm going to call up. They're not up there right now. Yeah, okay. And uh, how many times are you using right now at 12 amps? Say again, Fly. How many pounds per hour of water are you using right now at 12 amps? Approximately 3.2. That seems high to me. Is it high, high to you? Maybe. Okay, uh, that's what you expect? Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll wait to see what. Network. Tell me, fly. Go ahead, fly. Uh, what things, if any, can you do to make the water break go down? Uh, the, best, uh, the only thing left to us now is to power down more lending equipment. And I'll, I think uh, going to max heat on the uh, cabin tent. Yeah, but well, that's only good for a fraction. That's from this. You don't even see that. Okay, everybody, I would like to get the, the team that's going to be on next to punch up Amber. Let me see if you're here first. Fido Retro.
tell me, it's like, if you have you guys update that to, uh, to 190 hours for me, please? Uh, right, right, that's, that's an old one there. They can't find the way to put it They're working right there. Oh, they are working on it? Okay, if I've got everybody in the room, I assume that you've been uh, briefed by your uh, off-going comrade. But let's go over. Uh, let's go over the items that we know about. Joe, keep your uh, ear there, and if the crew comes up, we'll call this off for a while. Sounds like they're talking. Sounds like some people are awake up there. Says so Jim. Okay, the first order of business is uh, we have 3.8 millimeters going, and. Uh, Joe has got, the Capcom has got the uh, procedure for using the CSM containers, the canisters. And as soon as uh, practical, we're going to read that up. And we propose to use these canisters before we use the last primary canister in the limb, correct? Tell me, that's protocol. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, we're going to change out at what, 15 millimeters again? Tell me. Uh, my understanding is this going to be 7.6. 7.6. Is that right? Roger. Uh, Surgeon? Okay, stand by the air to ground. Aquarius Houston, go ahead. You might, when you get to that, you might tell him that you've run it in the lab, if he hadn't heard that yet. Okay, uh, Jeff, coming back on a minute while he's... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, a handy uh, a handy piece of stiff paper the right size 
uh, about an inch and a half uh, from the ring. Just cut off the, the ring holes, in other words, and you'll uh, you'll have a card about 11 inches long and probably uh, six inches wide. Okay, fine. I'll have Jack gather up the stuff. Okay. Okay, while he's gathering, Joe, you want to join us? That's the first subject. The second subject is is that so they have it on board. I think we had to read up the uh, CSM powering from the lamp for 15 amps. And do you have that, Joe? Uh, no, but Clint's got it and he's going to hand it to me. All right. That, that's for their information, not for use right now. Understand. Third item is the square one liftoff uh, configuration in the CSM. We ought to read that to them after they do the canister work. And uh, sometime today, we'll probably go in and do that at their convenience, right? Uh, Roger, quite so. You want me to do that before the uh, the LEM CSM power-up? Well, since we're doing both of them right now for info, we probably ought to give them the CSM power first, don't you think? I don't know. I prefer to give them the, uh, the square one switch. Uh, okay, I don't feel too strongly about it. Appealing. Why, why do you say that? Fine. Say again. I concur with that. With which? Which? With the bus isolation routine first. Bus isolation first? Right. Which was the launch configuration? Oh, okay. Alright. Okay. Because the oh. power-up procedure will start from that configuration. Just okay, fair enough. Okay. Now, uh, other than that, we have to discuss today, for discussion, this main V-check and what why that wants to be done and how it wants to be done and whatever else there is to say about it. Secondly, uh, I want a discussion in the room about the uh, mid-course time. We presently have one scheduled for 1.04. Uh, I think the crew input is that they would like to do it. The disadvantage of doing it early is that we probably have an acceptable PTC up and now we would have to take it down and do a PTC with eggs, but we have to do that sooner or later anyway. So I would like a discussion of that as soon as we uh, can here today. Uh, retro and recovery flight, uh, I've been hearing about the weather, but I don't have a clear picture from, from you guys yet as to what the weather situation is. Can you arrange that I get told all that here uh, in a little while? It looks, looks satisfactory now, flight. So we'll get to okay, it, but I want to see story. the maps and everything. Okay, yeah. recover you copy. Roger, I copy. We'll have a maps out there. Fine. Sometime today when things look a little low, why don't you call me and we'll go through that. We'll do fine. Okay, we have on board for the crew's benefit an EI minus eight hour pad. Uh, we have uh, we have constructed that pad using the sun. Uh, and, well, actually just the Earth with the Terminator flying. And we briefed the crew on that procedure. It was the one that was suggested yesterday. Uh, and we need a checklist for that procedure. FAO, can you tell me when we're going to have that? I want to know when we're going to have the checklist for the mid-course. I want to get an estimate on that. Say again. Yes. Okay. But when are we going to do the burn? At 104. When are we going to have the checklist? And how many hours do we have to verify it in the simulator before we uh, read it up? Okay. Uh, my concern with that is the same concern I'm, I have in general. I want to be sure that we don't keep meeting things to death and, and, and spend the last feverish minutes reading up the checklist to the crew. In all fairness, we ought to have the checklist available well before the burn, have it read up to them so they understand it, have the other crews verified in the simulator, and I want you to get a schedule for that that makes a certain amount of sense, not, not just the accidental result of one of our meetings being held. Right. We want them to get the thing done on a schedule that meets our desires, that is, running the simulator and read up early enough and crew to, for them to consider it. All right. and, and I want you to come back with some estimates on it, file. Okay. What are my other things? Okay, entry, uh, for everybody's benefit, uh, 
Well, we've pulled the white team out of the shift schedule for now. Uh, they have uh, a meeting scheduled today at noon. The, the CSM people have put together a gross timeline as, uh, as constructed around a trajectory uh, uh, timeline that Retro gave them last night. The SPAN people have been working on the CSM part of it. I think they'll probably have, from what I hear, a good baseline set of work for the Jeans team to go to work on this afternoon at noon and uh, finalize those procedures again. That ought to give us time to simulate everything's time. It ought to give us time to consider when we want to read these things up in time for the crew upstairs to think about them. Uh, that's for information, everybody. Anybody that has any thoughts on the entry or any any applications to the entry checklist, they ought to start writing them down and getting it to their buddies on the white team because uh, uh, we want to get that finalized uh, hopefully today. Now, what else? No compad is on board. We're saving a primary, a remaining primary limb canister. We're going to use the CSM procedure and we're collecting the gear upstairs right now. Mid course five time, mid course five burn estimate checklist, entry arrangements, main bus B, power to CSM, plus story. Okay, uh, I'm beginning to understand how we do the plus thing, but I'd like to talk some more with you today. Tell me about how we do that and mechanically how we do it. I guess I understand basically what you're doing. Okay, Clark. Okay, let me go around and see if anybody has anything else. Right now, uh, we have a mid course looking at us of about uh, seven feet a second, I gather, at mid course five time and the trajectory is being well behaved. But let me go around and see what everybody has to say. Retro? Okay, uh, yeah, that mid-course is holding in about seven feet per second. It might go a little bit. That's about nine if you do it at 118. Uh, we've got some options if we want to speed up, but uh, I don't think, well, I can tell you if you want to hear them, I'll just bring the sheet of paper once you look at them, man. Uh, uh, as far as the entry stuff goes, We've been working on that since yesterday, and uh, the lens jet procedures are in work over an MPAD, and we've been checking off the motion and all that stuff. Okay, but I, I hope that you and the lens and the jet procedures and the lens guys are starting to look towards bringing all this stuff together with the CSM portion uh, today. Well, I yeah, we won't have our our numbers probably before the second number. We'll have what we think is good. We've got preliminary estimates that it's okay. All right, so we'll carry that with the meeting. Meeting at noon. Right. Uh, and as far as I can tell, uh, we're still coming down basically the same landing area. I mean, as far as the meet the, the burn last night, of course, where we wanted to go within 20 miles. Uh, it looks like uh, we're about, if we don't do anything, we're 31 feet per second out of the quarter and hit course seven times. Okay. Effectively, that's the pad we gave him for EI minus eight. Not quite, but yeah, it's like twenty per second EI minus eight. Okay, that's all I got for it. Fido, go back for you, Mr. Fido. You have any for us? I think flight was kind of by for back now. That's okay. Let me know when you get it, guys. I uh, don't have anything. For sure. Guys, have you reviewed the AG uh, procedure we're using here for alignment? Uh, uh, your people knowing what the FAO guys are doing on the checklist there this morning? No, but I'll get with them. I will. Okay. Same story to you, okay? okay? Anybody's got anything to say about how we're going to do that? I want it set very early today, okay? Okay, you can go green, Tim. Control? Yeah. Don't have anything, Lynn, uh, other than I want to tag up these procedures that these people are kicking around. Okay. Get our input in. All right, uh, tell me. Okay, uh, we're uh, in real good shape. Uh, the procedures for using the twist consumables are in work right now. We'll have a story on that later. Say again. The procedures for using the plus water yes. in the limb are in work uh, right now, so uh, it shouldn't be too long and we'll have a, a good story on how okay. to do that. When you do, let me know and I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gene C? Uh, I'm just reading the checklist. Say again? Just making up the uh, entry, entry checklist. checklist. Okay. Uh, Econ? Roger, Flight. Uh, I just one other thing that you didn't specifically mention there. Uh, uh, we would like to get a readout on a repress pack. Uh, that's an uh, onboard meter readout. Why? Uh, we'd like to see what the pressure is on the uh, 
command module uh, O2 system. That's all we got. That the refresh pack is sealed off, isn't it? Right, and we'd like to make sure it's still sealed off. So you don't want to why are you asking for a reading? Not for the water purposes, but to be sure you still got the bottle? That's from you. Okay. Capcom? Go for it. It's kind of a I guess a check item sometime when they're down in the okay. CM area. They want to read out the refresh pack. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Aquarius Houston, go ahead. Start into the procedure. Uh, when you answer me back, speak up, uh, speak up into the microphone because our downlink is pretty noisy. The first thing we want you to do, and we'll do this on one canister and then let you go ahead and repeat it on the second. So take one of the LCGs and cut off the outer bag by cutting along one of the heat seals. Do it carefully and close to the heat seal because we may have to use the outer bag if we damage the inner bag. So go ahead and do that and uh, we'll, we'll do the next step. Talk about that. Negative five. Network, do you have anything? Negative five. 
Recovery, do you have anything except this weather story you're going to come out and tell me about? That's all, sir. Okay, does anybody have anything they want to bring to the attention of the room? We're in the process of uh, preparing the CSM canisters for the uh, pseudoses. Swagger's doing it. Okay, Joe, we've got that done. Okay, Jack. Uh, Any comments? Put the LCG itself. Okay, I uh, assume they're none. Would everybody go back bag. green, please? Put it in the outer bag and stow it someplace. We recommend U1, but you can stow it wherever it's convenient. Okay, now uh, pick up one of the uh, lithium hydroxide canisters and uh, uh, let me describe which which end is uh, is is which. Uh, it's uh, approximately square on one one of the vented uh, uh, flat ends has the strap, and that end we call the top. The end opposite we call the bottom. Is that clear? Over. FAO flight, one other thought. Uh, if we, we're going to do an AXPTC at some point here, could I have that procedure also written out? We're going to need that. Whatever it is. You know what I mean? interested because, you know, you always hear procedures are available and when you want to read them up, it turns out you got to wait 20 minutes. I'd like to have that procedure standing by. Now, when I don't need it, of course, in the last minute, of course, but it seems like it ought to be available and standing by rather than the last minute thrashing around. But 
control. Calm flight. Control. Okay. Okay, we've got some ideas about a procedure, but we still got some questions that we got to get answered. Uh, that we need to get with somebody, whether it's FAO or whoever's concerned, in how we want to implement this thing. Okay, but Tommy, oh, wow. Well, look, the only point is get with whoever wants to be got with. Okay. But pronto, and let's get the thing done in a timely fashion. Right. Now, let, I want everybody in the business to do a little more anticipating now. I think we're reading some of these things up kind of late for these guys. Sure. I think we got them last night a little bit, Nate. They're getting a little bit tired here and there. We have these procedures. We'll read up to them, give them time to sit there and look at it and think about it. Okay? Right. And let's not let the Ag PTC guys, whoever they are, put us off. Okay? Let's get, it, let's get them up here. And then uh, assume we're going to do the mid-course on time, and we ought to read it up even perhaps before we do the mid-course. Roger, Clay.
correct, Jack. The next step is to get the uh, EVA cue card uh, and use it to form an arch over the top of the canister. Just uh, just tuck one short end under uh, under one ridge on the top and the other one uh, uh, against a ridge on the other side so that it forms a rounded arch uh, over the top of the canister. Uh, you see, Jack, what we're going to do is slip the bag over this whole assembly and the, the cue card will will serve to keep the bag from being sucked down uh, against the screen. Over. Okay, I, I got the idea. Okay, and uh, uh, when you've done that, to hold the arch in place, just run a strip of tape across the sides of the, uh, that is, across the top of the arch, and uh, anchor it down to the, uh, to the sticky strips along each side. Okay, let me just repeat it here. Take a cue card, form an arch over the top, sticking it under the sides here. When we're through, run a piece of tape from the sides across the top and back to anchor to the other side. That's correct. Tell me if I comply. Okay, it works. It says that on this uh, plot, but to be sure that I'm with you. Your, your consumable chart is based on present rate continued. Does it allow for the two mid courses that we have planned or not? Uh, the, the rates that you see there are, are present rates. Now, the mid courses are going to change. I'm saying, I'm just saying that, that when you get to the GET at the bottom, they do not consider mid courses. Well, the mid course affects the power a little bit. You got to power up to do it. What do you mean? Well, okay. Is it, is it insignificant? Uh, just stand by one part. Okay. That's all I'm asking. Okay.
Okay, uh, now uh, press the bag against the sticky belts that we put on the sides of the canister. If there's any excess material, just kind of pleat it uh, so that it makes a fairly tight seal. And then take another uh, three-foot uh, strip of sticky tape and wrap it around the outside of the bag opposite the, the, bottom, uh, the bottom sticky belt to make a nice tight seal.
additional security on the back. Uh, when you get those done, you'll have you'll have uh, uh, two strips going uh, one way, and the other two will be perpendicular to them.
line. Uh, and now the next step is to cut a diagonal hole in one ear of the uh, of the plastic bag near the arch. You can pick either one and cut about a one and a half or two inch diagonal hole big enough to slip the the, uh, the red hose through. And uh, when you've done that, you'll just slip the red hose through so that it uh, goes about to the center of the uh, of the canister. It's not it's it, it, it's not critical except that the opening should be down, and then take the bag to the to the hose where it goes in so that it's nice and snug. Over. Okay, copy that. Okay. I'm going to be going in a configuration of the uh, suit loop, but I'd like to have Tony to listen up to make sure Tell I... Tell me it's light. Go ahead, Fly. Stay with us now because you're going to be going into the suit loop configuration to lash up this uh, canister now. To the right. Right. Okay. And uh, listen carefully. Right. Uh, you want us to go ahead and use this thing? Try it as soon as we get it light up, uh, independent of what you got there in millimeters. Uh, negative light. We'd rather wait until they, they reach 7.6 on the secondary canister. I'm surprised that you say that. I'm surprised that you don't want to go ahead and try this thing. Okay, well, the reason Maybe. is that uh, once we get off of the secondary canister, we don't plan to use it again. We're going to pull it out. So, so you want to get all you can out. So we want to get as much as we can. Capcom flight, you copy that? Capcom flight. Oh, flight coming. Got it. In the procedure that he's got, uh, right, right. the next step says to wait until it's 7-6. Joe, do you understand that they I don't want to try it. this until they get to 7-6? I, well, I, I read that and I uh, and I, uh, I thought it was probably optional. I, I thought we'd probably want well, to get this thing into in a configuration. Uh, that's what I thought, but their point is, is they would rather run this canister to 7.6 and know they're done with it. You see, in other words, to use it up. Now, that's one point of view. I started off with the other one, and I guess I'm in the middle right now. Uh, like so. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the reasons we want to we want to get it to seven six, and then we're going to have to take it out so it doesn't swell, and then we get uh, we're presented with possible swelling problems and having to force it out. Why don't we take it out now and use it later if we have to? We've got an unlimited supply of command module canisters if we need them. Yeah. I'd sure like to know if it works. I would. I sure would like to know if it works too. Now I don't want to press you into something that you've thought out and you think is right. Now, tell me again why the reasons why you want to go to seven six. Uh, okay, the reasons are, as I just explained, uh, we wanted to go to 7.6 and then pull it out uh, and know that we're done with it. What what happened to the air to ground, Inko? They are uh, switching on these. We should have it back now. Yeah. Looks like we lost the uh, loop. But why can't we just plug the secondary back in and go to 7.6 at some later time? Tell me. Uh, there's no reason that I know of why we can't do that. We want to later. Well, I, I, then, I'm not real sure. Uh, okay, I don't, what I, I don't difference quite understand your logic yet. But go ahead. Well, I'm not sure I understand what uh, difference it makes whether or not we try it now or whether or not we use a secondary canister. Well, the reason is, is if this doesn't work, we have to do something else. 
either modify this somehow or other, or do something entirely different, like fire up the fist and the power link and, uh, from the limb and uh, use the suit fan. We have to start getting all that in progress. You know? Roger, but the, the time yeah, difference, uh, uh, this secondary canister is not going to last but half an hour, 45 minutes more. Okay. Okay. Well, you, you got that going for you. I'm sure we'll admit that. It didn't last much longer. I, I think it'll work too. 
Uh, there's one step that I uh, that I omitted, which you can uh, do now quite uh, quite conveniently, and it's this: uh, where you stuff the towel into the bypass hole on the bottom. Uh, we recommend that you cut a few short pieces of tape and just tape that over so it doesn't fall out. Over. Okay, we'll do. Why aren't you getting flow? 
What, what is stopping us from falling through it? Is it the hose not hooked up? Uh, I don't think so, but I'll check it. Joe, do you know? The hose is not hooked up at that assembly, is it? Or is it? Is the end of the hose, the other end of the hose, is it hooked up to the assembly to hook into the suit loop? Is that what you said? It's hooked up?
Hello, Aquarius, Houston. Grant. Uh, Roger, Jack, Tom here. Just like to pass on to you and Jim that uh, double data priority going today and going to convene the CPCB and we'll have you all kinds of good procedures for later on. Over. We've got a little coordination down here. Uh, Aquarius Houston, they might pass on to Jim. He had such a long day yesterday, he thought we were going to have to play him some guitar music to get him to sleep last night. Over.
We've been tracking uh, what appears to be a very mild storm with no real consistency to the wind pattern uh, out in the Pacific, of course. And uh, the weather people just come in and they're talking about their next recon. Pertinent to when to schedule the next mid course, we are dependent on a number of things, uh, including, for example, getting the burn checklist available and verified. Uh, unless somebody has some reason why we should do otherwise, and in the interest of getting a recon as late as practical with the guys probably asleep out there now, I've asked to get a report at about 3 o'clock this afternoon on what the weather conditions would be. This would be at about 96 GET, uh, 98 GET, which would be about six hours before the currently first uh, scheduled mid-course 104. And that would give us some time to look at it and decide that uh, we either wanted to put off the mid-course or, or it was clear that we could go ahead or whatever else one can learn from uh, looking at the weather maps. So uh, for everybody's benefit, I'm, I'm looking to get a kind of a, a look at the weather to, to this afternoon at 3. And uh, of course the thing that this would help us with is if we wanted to add any Delta into the burn to do some weather avoidance retro flight. You might consider down there, Chuck, what you would do if you wanted to move the range further up. I, I, I kind of assume that's the way you do it. Is, uh, yeah. not, not with the entry range, but with the maneuver at the at our big course, at big course 5, the way we do it. Yeah, I assume you're looking at that, moving it uh, however many miles it would be. Yeah. Let me say one thing about that. That might be a good reason to put this thing off the right. yeah. Well, uh, that, that's why I'm introducing okay, the thought Thank here. You. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. okay. I'm talking to weather guy now. We're looking and I, unless somebody has some uh, better logic, I, I have to get a, at least a first freak down here at 3 this afternoon, and that'll tell us, I think, whether, assuming that we decided we wanted to go at 104, whether we had to put it off, and it would be plenty of time to let the crews uh, react and adjust the sleep schedule for a later. Uh, maneuver. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, Mark. Okay. And, and 
it's no problem. The total got a bit of numbers on uh, channel 58. So again, Mark, and, and uh, just for the record, the numbers you quoted me gives us no problem with the current rate of usage in the vehicle, plus these two big courses. Uh, that's affirmative. Yeah, by no problem, I mean we are within the, uh, the time constraints we have to deal with it. That's right. Thank you. Sometime uh, at cruise convenience, since we've been rocking along here with all the tunnel hardware out, we've done burns, we've been doing PTCs to get a confirmation of that docking tunnel index. See if that thing has shifted, if we're going to be transferring a line from one vehicle to the other. Yes, we'll do that. Remind me of it uh, later now when we okay. get uh, closer to the burn. So, uh,
Larry in Houston, go ahead. Okay, Joe, I'm ready to start on the command module uh, switch configuration. I'm on page L1 one Okay, Econ GNC. Okay, Jack, I understand you're ready for the uh, switch configuration checklist. For Jack's ready to copy the switch the, configuration uh, the, checklist. Uh, lift off configuration. Okay, where's uh, GNC? Has he got a man copying this in the back room? Over. I'll say fine. Get a GNC copying it in the back. Okay, I'll read these in, uh, in bunches of three or four at a time. Some of them are the same, some of them are changed, and uh, you can uh, read them back every few steps. EMS function to off. EMS mode to standby, no change. GTA off, down, no change. And GTA cover secure, no change. Over. Attitude to IMU, no change. FDAI scale 5-5, five, five, no change. FDAI select, number one. And FDAI source, GDC, over. Retro flight. Sorry, flight. Look, uh, relative to my considerations here, I'm going to want to know about this weather. If uh, what it cost me, yeah, uh, anywhere between 104 and 118. Okay, I got to save it now. Fine, I want. To, okay, you, you are here. Yeah, bring it up while they're doing this work. I don't want to talk on the loop. I want the other guys to be able to hear. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, the next one that changes uh, three down, where we go man man attitude pitch to rate command. Over. The next one, two, three, four are unchanged. And then we want uh, translation controller power to off, rotation control power normal two to off, and rotation control power direct two to off. Over. Okay. Okay, uh, the next two are unchanged, and we want the three BMAG switches in rate two. Over. RCS logic off down, and the rest of the page is unchanged. Over. Okay, let me read back the whole page. Okay, go.
Okay, that's uh, that's 100 percent Jack. Let's go to page two, and we start with Alpha PC to PC and uh, launch vehicle SPS indicators to GCI. Over. Okay, keep going. Okay, the next three are unchanged, and then the event timer starts to stop. Over. Okay, uh, uh, the next ones uh, on panel one are unchanged, and on panel two, go all the way down to uh, SMRCS propellant talkbacks, and in parenthesis, scratch out eight and put four to gray, and then pencil in a line, SMRCS propellant talkbacks four to barber pole. Over. Jack, uh, that the switches all remain in their present position, which is center. But we, but because we have no power on the bus, the bottom row of talkbacks will be spring loaded to the barber pole position, and that's for your information. Over. Oh, that's great. Uh, I know that. It's, uh, I'm not thinking too well. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the next one, two, three, four, five are the same. And we want EDS Auto to off. Over. Okay. Okay, the next three are the same. And then we want propellant dump to RCS command, two engine out to off, and launch vehicle rates to off. Over.
first one on page three. Power jet two to off. Over. Okay. Okay, uh, the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are the same. And then we get caution warning normal to act. Caution warning CSM to CM. And caution warning power to off. Over. Okay, the next one, two, three, four are the same, and then we get to the H2 heaters to off, and the O2 heaters to off. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jack. Uh, those are the only changes on page one dash three. Fuel cell 3 to base bus A, talk back. 
Okay, I'd like to. Uh, Jack, that's uh, completely correct on one dash four. Let's go to one dash. I'd like to get retro. Retro flight. Page the first one. Retro flight. Two, three, four, 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 five, six are the same. Guidance flight. First flight. Want, oh, I'd like to get a group of us on AFD conference while while Joe's using this air to ground. I want the CSM guys to stay in this flight direct and loop and and, and okay, answer any questions for him. Okay, GCD okay, come. Are the same, and we want to get AMB. Use the flight director loop, but you want to get some other guys over in the other net to talk about a uh, take time for make course. Assume you don't have any input to that. Is that right? That's what I want. S man squelch uh, off and fuel cell reactants valve. Control flight, go ahead. Over. Can you meet me on AFD Conference Roger. here in a little while at Bayo flight? Can you talk okay. about that take time option? One, two, Tell me how about you. Tell me if I want tape recorder forward to center. Tape motion talk back to Good. Barbara uh, We need to have a discussion of take time for the big course. When can you do that? And PMP if you, you, I know you over. just got something here that you're tied up with. But how long will that take to resolve? Something? Uh, it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Okay, well, go ahead and resolve okay. it. Uh, uh, I'll go over to uh, get everybody over to AFD conference in about five minutes to talk off. about this uh, take business, and okay? Inverter uh, two to off. Over. Have you got step 15? Here in the wrong head, I think. And we want AC1 reset to off. Over. Okay. Okay, skip one, and we want inverter 2, AC2 to off. And skip one, and we want AC2 bus reset. AC2 bus reset to off. Reset, wasn't it? Okay, uh, skip the next one, and on panel four, we want SPS gauging to off, telecom group one to off, telecom group two to off, and white gold pumps to off. Over. Okay, right. Final flight. Final flight. Uh, we are predicting that if we don't burn the engine, that we will burst the she at uh, 107 hours. Would you find out from the back room people with the control guys where that vents and what that would mean to you and how much it is, and whether that's a big vent or is it equivalent to a water dump or a urine dump or something else or what? I'll run to that. Would you find out about that because that bears a little bit on picking our take time. Roger. Okay, skip two, and then we want 
interior integral lighting off, and interior flood lights off. Scratch out full dim or full bright, over. Okay, and circuit breakers on panel five. We want all open. Over.
landing vent light slash post landing to open. The, uh, the, the post landing vent FLD slash PL to open. The next are SCS Direct Ullage 2 to open. SCS Direct Ullage 2 to open. Uh, that's correct. And the next ones are SMRCS Peter A Main B. And Eater C main B open. Okay, service bus RCS Eater main B open and Eater C main B open. That's correct. And SMRCS. Peter B, main A, open, and Peter D, main A, open. Jack, that's the last of the additions to this page. Go back to the regular checklist and uh, go to the Auto RCS Select switches. We want all 16 of them open. Over. That is off. go down to uh, interior numeric lighting off, interior integral lighting off, and interior flood lighting off. Over. Okay. Okay, skip three. We want sex logic two off down and sex pyro arm two off down. Over. Tom, uh, Tom sounds a little. Tom sounds better now, Jack. That was. 
Good. Suit power was off, and uh, then go to panel 10. Power off, and suit power off. Over. Okay, guys. Okay, and that's the uh, that's the only changes on page 1-8. Over. Page uh, one dash nine, and on panel one hundred, skip the first four. We want IMU power off. Over. Okay. Okay. Skip the next one. We want numerics lighting off, flood lights off, and integral lights off. Over. Okay, on panel 101, skip the first three. We want urine dump to off and wastewater dump to off. Over. Got it. Okay, on panel 122, the only change is condition lamps to off. Over. All right. Okay, panel 162, no change. Panel 163, no change. Now add in panel 201, food warmer to off. Over. Hello. Hello, Deke, this is John. Hey, John. How's it going? Just fine. He's just reading up the CSM uh, checklist here right now. Just oh. the Federation. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was going to come over here a little later this morning and finish up some paperwork. Have you resolved that suit list question? Right. I'm sure that'd be okay. Uh, that's with a permanent flight. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the, the change. Constructive criticism. No, they got more help than you usually got. Yeah. Yeah. What was wrong with the old procedure? Oh, probably got enough. Uh, there was, there was, there was nothing, nothing really wrong, wrong with the old procedure either. Does this just make it okay. better? I guess we got everything else to work out. Yeah. I don't know who else doing what, but... Uh, well, I mean, if you agree with the change? Yeah. Yes, we I agree with the change. Uh, it must be making no it better. No platform or uh, something. Power up and uh, pr procedure work. Well, it is a uh, piece of cake, I think, to do that. Let me ask it. Well, I'll see you later. I thought we had okay. to make the change. Bye. Okay, it... it uh, well, no, we don't have to make the change. I guess it does make it better and oh, it saves over. a couple of steps. All right, and that's... Uh, either uh, way, have you marked up the copy for Joe? Uh, negative. I thought that the uh, permanent people that came uh, in here marked that up. Can I, can I send them to you? E, both open. Over. Okay, he does not have those changes. Would you bring it over and be sure he does, please? Okay. Yes, I will. Uh, affirmative, and uh, the, that's all the changes on page 1-9. Okay. Okay. Discussion of the take time considerations for Mikros, okay? 
and light slash post. And uh, Econ. Okay, I'll just turn down here to ground. Okay, uh, everybody, we have the uh, initial, uh, initial configuration for the CSM entry being radioed up right now. Uh, while that's going on, I want to have a discussion of the considerations involved in selecting the take time uh, coming up for mid-course, uh, whatever we're calling it, five. Now let me see if I've got Retro and Fido on the loop and they can support that discussion right now and they've got all the considerations. Have you Retro and Fido? Retro and Fido flight? I'm here flight. You got your considerations thought out? Yes sir, flight. Fido flight? Go ahead flight. Have you got your considerations thought out for this uh, big course big time selection discussion? Uh, I'm farming up what that problem with the sheet with control. Yeah, well, right now. Are you saying you want to wait five minutes or I'm what? I'm saying I'll need five more minutes, yes, sir. All right, Control, will you be ready? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, are you ready? Uh, Roger. FAO? Check for five minutes. Do you have all your considerations for the six minutes? Roger. Five minutes, I want to go through all those. Weather from flight and recovery flight. Go ahead, flight. Uh, who's answering? Weather or recovery? Recovery. Uh, we're going to have a discussion here in about five minutes as to what take time to consider. Uh, part of the consideration is uh, the uh, weather avoidance over. possibility. Uh, and I'd like you to join us for that discussion and bring weather with you on the okay, loop in case yeah, if he's the, not up already. Uh, Roger, we'll get him up. Uh, and that will be in about off. five minutes. They are, there are six circuit breakers involved. And they're all, they're the first six from the left on the bottom row of the panel. They're under lighting. We want the three flood circuit breakers out and the three numeric slash integral circuit breakers. Not, I, I don't mean out, I mean closed. We want those six closed and the rest open. Over. Okay, that's Jack and all the rest open. Okay. Panel 227, no change. And panel 229, one addition to the circuit breakers we want open. And, and those are the timers, main A and main B, two to open. Over.
say again, Jack, uh, Thomas just improving. Correct. 
uh, those are the only changes on one day at 13, and there are no changes on one day at 14, and you've got it all, Jack. Over. You can get those configured uh, when you can, and uh, uh, the uh, next order of business I've got for you is a procedure to verify that main bus B is good, and a little after that, we'll want to read up to you for your future information uh, a procedure for transferring uh, LEMP power to the command module. Okay, that sounds good. I think so. Stand by one second. I'll see if Flight has any words for us before you start that. Flight Ecom. Flight Ecom. I would vote for that. Okay. Anybody else? Jack Houston, over. Uh, Jack Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we don't have anything for you. Uh, uh, our only concern uh, is that you'll wake up somebody. Is there anybody sleeping right now? Okay, understand they're all up, and uh, did you say you wanted to, to copy the other procedure now, over? Oh, I can if you want. It's your choice. Uh, I'd rather you went ahead with the switch configuration, Jack. Okay, let's do that, and uh, then I'll be back with you. Okay, see you later. And uh, uh, tell Jim that Deke wants him to go to bed. Hey, uh, Joe, Captain, but okay. come up a minute. Right okay. Did you tell Jack to go over there and do that? Tell him to stand by one minute. We may have another item for it. Uh, Aquarius Houston, over. Okay, stand by one minute, Jack. Uh, before you go in there, uh, uh, Flight has got one one other item for you. Okay. Uh, he's coming. Captain. Uh, we better put those motor switches on. Yeah, I don't know. They, I think Billing 45 has finally concurred. Get the procedure from the back room. I don't know what that does to this configuration business, but we want to activate the batteries and get them on the buses at least through the motor switches. Now, I guess you have to either have the circuit breaker closed to do that or, or pull it after it's done or whatever. Give me the procedure. May, may I suggest that, that we combine that with the main bus check? Uh, twice, man. Go ahead. Yeah, 45 concurs in, in melding it into the main bus B. Uh, look, what, what is the main bus B procedure? What do we want to check and why and with what battery? Fight huh? it, Go ahead. We, we want to, to verify that we have a good main bus. To do this, we'll need to use a battery. We've got the power battery bus B from some battery. And the easiest thing to procedurally to do is to use BAT B to do that. Battery B? Battery B to do that. We do not necessarily have to use battery B. We can use any of the three batteries, but it is a less complicated procedure. Wait, Captain? Yeah. Before you get torqued up, it, it seems to me that we don't dare let him power the main buses with anything until he gets the switch configuration and the circuit breakers pulled, so I'd like to let him go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, but, uh, okay. I don't like what you guys are doing. You're mixing up something important with something that, that isn't a problem. And I don't like that just intuitively. You mean using that thing? No, checking the main bus at this time. I don't like that. We've got something important to do with the battery bus motor switches. I don't like mixing it up with something that's not as important. I, I don't know why I don't like it right now, but that's my reaction. Okay, well, look, look. Let us get our story together on that one. Yeah, like let him go over there. Uh, let him know, uh, Jack, uh, Joe, 
So we're considering having them activate the uh, uh, battery bus motor switches, battery bus motor switches. Main bus pass switches. Main bus pass switches because we think okay, uh, it's, it's cool over there. And uh, as soon as we can determine that, we'll let them know. Aquarius Houston, over. Ron Luke, Joe. Aquarius Houston, over. Okay, Jack, uh, uh, you can go ahead and set up that, uh, that switch configuration. What we're discussing is, uh, is having you uh, uh, activate the uh, main bus high motor switches a little later on, uh, simply to verify that, that they'll be okay because the batteries are probably getting a little bit cool. But we'll come back to you with, uh, with the procedure and discussion about that after you get the, uh, the switch configuration set up. Over. Okay, real fine. You're right. Thanks. Flight AST. Okay, tell me reported that uh, the 36 mm is now and 6.5 is going to get an onboard component. <laughs> Sorry about that. I want to notify. Okay. 6.1 now. Okay, I'm going to give the comms to Fredo now. Captain down, flight. Joe, did you get a correction to the suit loop part of the CO2 last year? Uh, no, I didn't. Tell me if I was bringing it to them, please. They have changed something that they think just makes it better. Okay. Uh, I can't describe to you why.
Uh, I know what your feelings are about this main bus fee checkout. Uh, Ken, that's, who that's a little bit, who is writing the entry procedures, is concerned about it. I think we ought to find out. Simply because it impacts the procedures. I agree. I, we ought to find out. Secondly, the, another thing about finding out is we'll find out that the motor switch is working. Uh, I just didn't want to mix up two objectives in, in one test. And I didn't know why I didn't want to do that, but, but we got the guy over there now. We'll let him configure, we'll put the motor switch right. Then we'll do what's relevant here in this main B, which also checks the motor switch, which I'm more interested in. I have every feeling that the bus itself is all right. Uh, Joe, though, the other items we have to do. We are going to have to, at some point, operate some gear in the command module. Therefore, today, you have to work into your reading schedule. <laughs> The procedure for powering and the limb power. My knowledge is still on that on board. Okay. So, but let's first do this business. Yes. All right. Get them. Get the ecom. You want to ecom and tell them you uh, have you got a, the latest copy of that procedure for the uh, powering from the limb. That's probably what. All right. Well, the Capcom will need a copy. Capcom, the other thing is that we're coming up here probably within a half hour on the canister of work, and I'd like to see how that goes, okay? Right. Let me tell you one other thing. Tom Stafford asked a while back, wouldn't it be a good idea to consider unloading, possibly unloading the end of the flight by doing the plus work into the Aston tanks now? Uh, I'm, I'm going to discuss this further, but my first hack at it says that it takes, if you shut off the descent tanks, 30 hours to deplete the ascent water tanks, which you have to do before you do the plist thing, which means in order to do any good, you kind of have to decide to proceed to do that right now to give time for the ascents to go down to see if the plisses work. And, and with what we got going for us, plus a 20-pound margin in the, in the water, just chalked up the measurement uncertainty, which we surely will get at least half of that. I kind of think maybe now isn't the time to get into that. Uh, with the confidence that we are not going to have to get into it at all. I'll continue to discuss that one, but I want to give you how I feel about it right now.
Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. 